In Tan Tan Citadel, a modern city. The big door opened, light shone in, and a man's silhouette came out. The man stood on a high-rise building, the crowd below shouted and cheered passionately. That man is you, he looked up at the sky and thought, the war had lasted for 500 years, and how many brothers had sacrificed their lives. It finally ended at our place, he closed his eyes and smiled with satisfaction. Then he opened his eyes wide, he loudly told the crowd, if I were still alive, this world would no longer experience chaos and war. The crowd below became even more enthusiastic, all chanting in unison, worshipping the saint, thanking him for giving the people peace. The scene moves to the highest and most sacred seat. He flew here, his face was thinking about something. The image of the past that appeared was a brutal war, he thought, 500 years ago, heaven and earth had mutated, and all sentient beings had divine powers. A great war that lasted five years, a battle called the Great Chaos War of the Era of Dharma, took place. Experiencing countless dangers and opportunities, making my abilities become even stronger. He, with his unique martial ability, has the power to overwhelm the forces of all directions. The peace of the world had once again returned, and he was now sitting calmly in his chair. I'm thinking, in my small time of rest, I must now enjoy the extremely precious peace in this old age. A person suddenly appeared in front of him. He said, didn't I tell you, don't come and bother me while I'm here. The other man laughed and said, we are brothers, this junior brother also has to disobey those ridiculous rules. He replied, among my younger brothers and sisters, you are the most mischievous, so what is the matter with you? The other man took out a yellow card and said, the secret talisman of the Taoist sect leader. He thought in bewilderment, Taoism, Tian Fan to it. He thought, this woman is extremely conceited, never cares about others, why does she send amulets to promise with the holy sex in the world, only in times of emergency can they establish extremely secret contact. He accepted the card, he said, go back down, the other man replied, go, senior brother. He looked at the card without saying anything, I thought to myself, suddenly recalling some humiliating past events. He remembered the old days, 15 years ago, coincidentally, I practiced the mixed element 9 true mind method in the secret realm of cold talk. Suddenly a lady rushed forward. Lam Fan recalls that at an important moment when the attackers broke through the life and death barrier, that woman suddenly rushed in. The woman jumped out of the lake, startling him. Suddenly she landed right in front of him. I remember, that woman fell into my arms. He then shouted, Insolent, who are you to disturb me when I'm around? Suddenly, three assassins appeared and said, Tian Fan to it, I didn't expect your cultivation base to be so profound, you could still run here to find rescue soldiers after being paralyzed. The three assassins rushed in to attack and screamed, everyone hugged each other and died. He threw a palm, condensed water into a sword, and with just one move, he sent three assassins flying. He hugged the woman and jumped out of the lake. He held and looked at the other woman. Suddenly his heart beat very strongly. The veins on his face stood out. He suddenly thought, it's gone, there's no longer a pulse left, he's gone crazy. The other woman was placed on the ground and was still unconscious. His whole body felt like it was on fire, his body temperature rising. He tried to practice again and thought, the spirit of the spirit, the path of no return, no principle of no righteousness. Suddenly there was a hand behind him wrapping around his body. He was startled when he opened his eyes and saw the woman hugging him. Looking at that woman's face, he worriedly thought, what does she want to do, it's over, now I can't move, moving means everything is in vain. He had no choice but to shout, get out, she was still stunned. The other woman said that the situation was urgent, so she had to ask someone to cure the poison, which made him bewildered. Suddenly that woman kissed him, he was extremely bewildered. The sky changed from dusk to evening, when the weather sets, the birds fly back to their nests. His whole body was still burning, and the other woman was in a brighter mood. That woman turned around and said to him, If there's a difficult day, just say my name, Tian Fan to it, I will return the favor today. He could only tremble all over without responding. He thought to himself, oh no, this must be the legendary trick of just brushing off his clothes and leaving, how dare he insult his innocence and just leave, Tian Fan to it, he remembers her name, there. He thought with amusement, this memory makes me feel humiliated just thinking about it, he has always maintained his dignity heroically, but today someone else is using him as an antidote. He remembered again and thought, later, during a battle, the sect surrounded and killed the demon sect. 
La Van Tong was startled when he saw a hand approaching. That was Tian Fong to it. She held out her hand and said, The first time meeting the Taoist sect, the nine provinces issued an order, Tian Fong to it. He shook hands but felt very awkward and said, Pleased, but I feel like we have met before. Tian Fong to it said, Really, I've never been interested in men before so I don't remember their faces. He thought back, what made me even more angry was that after that, after many cooperative battles, this guy didn't remember anything about me and still calmly treated me like a couple of strangers. Looking at Tian Fong to it fighting, he thought, but this woman is indeed very brave and cunning, not losing to anyone, and is also enlightened about sacrificing her life to protect peace. After struggling many times, she became the new leader of the sect. Returning to reality, from the card, the image of Tian Fong to it appeared and said, Tonight, at the hour of the hour, the later stars of the Taoist sect will not be closed, important things need to be discussed, they must come. He thought, now that the evil spirits have basically been controlled, so what is the need for a yin talisman? The scene moves to Buddhism, inside the irregular peak, many sky lanterns were let fly. He flew here, he looked around. Looking back at the old location, he was speechless. He remembered the past and thought, oh my god, why did he choose this place, it made the humiliating memories of the past come back again. He walked to a nearby hut, he sat down and waited. A shadow appeared from behind and said, Holy Venerable, you're here early. He replied, In this world, there is something that makes the leader of the Tian Fong to its sect have to use a talisman, which makes me even more curious. The figure that appeared was Tian Fong to it. Tian Fong to it walked past him, Tian Fong to it sat down opposite him. Tian Fong to it uses magic to create a set of tea and cups. Water from the lake suddenly rose up into a stream. The water flows into the teapot along with the tea leaves. Tian Fong to it pours warm tea into a cup. Then he used magic to make a cup of tea fly to him. Tian Fong to it said, This is the most famous red tea of 500 years ago, try drinking it. He accepted the cup of tea, he tried it and said, What kind of evil amateur would cause another problem, right? Tian Fong to it replied, The matter concerns our son. He asked again, Ah, how is our son? Only then did he realize what had happened, he was so surprised that he spat out the tea and hit Tian Fong to it. He exclaimed in panic, what did you just say, what child, child, which is our son? Tian Fong to it calmly took a towel to wipe his face and said, calm down first. He slammed his hand on the table, he shouted, what are you joking about, except for me and you, we fought back and forth a few times, one didn't have sex, two didn't have feelings, where could we have a son? He suddenly paused, remembering what happened the day before, then stammered out, Except. Tian Fong to it said right away, That's right, that's when I asked you to detoxify. He was shocked beyond words. Then he angrily shouted, Very well, you finally told the truth, the few times I fought with you behind the scenes, you couldn't bear to pretend like nothing happened, it made me think I was going crazy that day, caused that illusion again. Tian Fong to it sipped tea and said, Your Majesty, please calm down, this is not entirely your fault. He shouted again, How can I calm down if you tell me to calm down? My old master in this life has always dealt with women with respect and courtesy, treated them equally, never had any actions that went too far, but was punished, it seems like the antidote tool was also taken away. The old man's precious thing was taken away, when everything was resolved well, when the matter was over, he just threw up his clothes and left, not even a word of thanks, for me. Tian Fong to it listened for a while and couldn't help but get angry. Tian Fong to it slammed his hand on the table and shouted, Isn't that enough? If you have the courage, shout more so that the whole mountain sect knows. He was scared and quickly covered his mouth, he quickly looked around. Tian Fong to it looked down shyly and continued, Why do you need to be so urgent? From beginning to end you didn't do anything wrong to me. He bewilderedly put his hand over his mouth and said, Aha, that's right, from beginning to end I did nothing wrong, why am I so nervous? He crossed his arms and calmly said, It's not me who's wrong, on the contrary, the person who's wrong here is you. Tian Fong to it said, So these past few years I have never thought about who is responsible, but this time. He quickly said, Wait. Tian Fong to it wondered why. He put his hand on his head and said, I need a few seconds to regain my composure. Tian Fong to it sat down, the teapot shook, preparing to fly. He took the teapot into his hand. Then he poured the tea directly into his mouth. A moment later, ten pots of tea were brought down to his stomach. Tian Fong to it still sat quietly looking at him, he placed the teapot on the table. 
He said, things have come to this, then, then. Tian Fang Tuit asked again, then, he replied, as her wish, I agree to get married. Tian Fang Tuit said in bewilderment, ha, huh, what are you thinking? He took out a piece of wood. He clenched his fist, the log is also under enormous pressure, it gradually becomes smaller. After a while it turned into a diamond ring. The ring was given to Tian Fang Tuit. He said, although we don't have any feelings for you, but if we have children, then let's get married, the date will be determined by you. Tian Fang Tuit raised his hand to stop him and said, you are wrong. Tian Fang Tuit hesitantly said, I, I have no intention of marrying you. He exclaimed in surprise, hey, are you making me angry, so why did you suddenly come to me and tell me we have a son? Tian Fang Tuit says, because, because. Tian Fang Tuit has something very difficult to say. Then Tian Fang Tuit stood up, she moved closer to him. Tian Fang Tuit whispered something in his ear. After hearing it, he was dumbfounded. He exclaimed again, what did she say? He turned around and was now very close to Tian Fang Tuit. The two shyly turned away. He calmed down and said, I'll go home and think about it first, I'll answer you in a few days. He left, Tian Fang Tuit said, wait. He replied, what's wrong? Tian Fang Tuit continued, I suddenly called you over and told you that I had a son with you, didn't you ever think I was cheating on you? I didn't know what to say when I heard that, he answered, to be honest, the first time we met each other made me not have a good impression of you, self-centered, self-centered, without knowing how to be polite, rude. Hearing that, Tian Fang Tuit immediately crushed the tabletop. I'm still talking, but later we faced fierce battles to the death, killing enemies as wastefully as that man of yours, which made me change my perspective, making me a little shaken, move with her. Tian Fang Tuit heard it and became bewildered, but he said that sometimes he wanted to become brothers with her, hearing that, Tian Fang Tuit became angry. Tian Fang Tuit threw the teapot and shouted, Who, who wants to be your brother, why don't you quickly go home and think of a way to go? He flew away and said, I'll see you again the next day. Tian Fang Tuit is still upset. The night sky was cloudless, bright white, revealing everything clearly, he flew zigzag in the sky. He worriedly said, Oh my God, save me, save me, what's going on, what's going on, what's going on? He was so worried that his face was haggard and he was sweating profusely. He shouted, What is going on? Suddenly his heart was pounding again. He thought anxiously, Calm down, calm down, calm down, the deity's heart has been cultivated until there are no waves, lying as still as a mirror, tens of thousands of strong concentration in front of me has not changed color but why now, now my heart beats so hard again. His heart has stabilized, he was sweating profusely in fear. He thought to himself, no, suddenly panicking like that made me unable to adapt, I had to find someone to fight and relieve my feelings. He looked around for a moment. Then he flew quickly towards the moon. A moment later, he flew to the demon sect. Inside the Tian CAC, there are two soldiers guarding the gate, they suddenly discovered something. A soldier shouted, it's a saint, quickly call for help. He said coldly, how to help, it's too slow. He shouted, DA can can, go out to fight, the scream echoed throughout the demon sect. Looking at the demonic energy radiating upward, he thought, the demonic energy was boiling. All the branches of the sky radiate purple smoke, something flew up in the sky. The form of a woman appeared, you are probably waiting for this person. The two immediately rushed into battle, purple gold light emitted throughout the sky. The other woman punched him in the chest. He said, not bad, there is progress, in this world there are not many people in this world who can touch my golden body protection two layer power, except for you, there are not many people in this world. The other woman said, you bastard, why do I suddenly remember someone's chest? He said, annoyed, wanting to fight. D.A. King Ken replied, come on. The two engaged in continuous combat in the air, all over the heavens trembled. The soldiers below were afraid and said to each other, haven't we already followed the good side? Why is the Holy Venerable still coming? Could it be that there are still people secretly causing trouble? Were the Holy Venerable discovered? Could it be that the sect master has a sudden attack? It's a big deal. It's not bad to go back and forth with the Saint Venerable, hum, you idiot, a newbie like you, you've never seen the Saint Venerable's five-point heavenly power, you can kill the top ten people in one move, demon sect, now he does not use force, obediently prays to the Saint not to get angry, destroy this place until there is nothing left. 
Several other soldiers are also talking to each other. What does this way of fighting mean? Is it boring to tease the sect master? Now he won't use force. Obediently prays to the saint not to get angry, to destroy this place no more. Something. Above him and D.A. King Kim were still fighting. The two of them seemed to enjoy this fight. After a while, the space became quiet, beer cans scattered about. He and D.A. King Kim sat drinking beer together on the roof. The two of them clinked hands and shouted, Ho, the two drank heavily. D.A. King Kim drinks but lets the beer flow down. The beer dripped down and drenched my body. D.A. King Kim sighed and wiped his mouth. D.A. King Kim said, Big brother, every time you have any trouble, you take out your anger on me, and even this small body of mine can't digest it. He said, Forget it, before it was you who chased me to test your tricks, I didn't blame you at all. Looking at the world, only by fighting with her can I feel at ease. Hearing that, D.A. King Kim laughed happily. D.A. King Kim said, In this world, you are the only one who beats me like a man, no other man would love me. He patted his shoulder D.A. King Kim and said, Don't we have a good relationship when we fight? D.A. King Kim curled her legs and rubbed them. D.A. King Kim said, Is there anything in this world that can bother our invincible saint? Then, D.A. King Kim looked at him and continued, I was very curious. He didn't answer, just took a deep breath. Then he said, without any prior notice, without any mental preparation, I suddenly appeared as Tian Fang to its son. D.A. King Kim hearing that, she couldn't help but spit out all the beer in her mouth into his face. She covered her mouth and forced herself to say, please give me the Wi-Fi password in hell, I'm sorry I couldn't help but laugh. D.A. King Kim looked at him for a moment, suddenly he stood up and asked loudly, I had absolutely no idea if that was okay. Just before I was cultivating, he danced with his hands and feet as he spoke, speaking for a long time. D.A. King Kim sat listening and just smiled. From behind suddenly came a little girl's voice, don't bully my mother. He was startled and turned around to look. I didn't expect this girl to look exactly like D.A. King Kim. from her face to her outfit, her eyes were still sparkling with tears, her clenched hands looked very angry. The girl ran all the way to him. I used all my strength to continuously hit him, shouting loudly while hitting him, bad person, stay away from my mother. After a while, he burst into tears again but did not forget to beat his brother, beat him to death, beat him to death, he was really confused, he looked at D.A. King Kim and asked exactly one word. D.A. King Kim shyly stroked his hair and replied, yes. He even innocently said D.A. King Kim, and when he had a child he never said a word to me, so I gave her a super big lucky money as a pillow. Then he looked at the girl and said, This child is very lovely, as lovely as his mother, in this place where there is no love, cold-blooded and heartless, there is a sacred motherly love that is truly rare. D.A. King Kim smiled and asked him again, Is it true? At this moment, he suddenly felt pain that reached the sky. He looked down and saw that the girl had stabbed him in the stomach with a spear. Truly very famous and fierce, he also knows how to destroy immortals. Who knew that before he could do anything more, he grabbed his neck and warned him, this is not the kind of thing a child should play with, she screamed loudly, let me go, let me go, you bad girl, who told you to bully your mother, ta. D.A. King Kim still sat there but smiled brightly as if she felt very happy with what the other two were doing together. He took the blade from her hand. He carefully advised that if you don't use this thing carefully, you will injure yourself. As soon as he finished speaking, he cried out in pain, another trick of this girl, the handle of the blade was equipped with sharp needles, causing him to be caught off guard and fall into the trap. He looked quite angry and shouted, hey kid. Taking the opportunity to open his mouth, the girl threw a round brown pill straight into his mouth. By the time he realized it, the pill was already in his stomach. He didn't get angry but changed his tone and said, actually you naughty child, do you know that the deity of the hundred poisons is invincible? While speaking, a bitter feeling began to appear in his neck. He exclaimed, so bitter, so acrid, this, what is this? D.A. King Kim introduces it to you, this is what it got from the five poison copper old, five spice pills, the toxicity is not great, but it is extremely difficult to eat, something others can't see, but it is quite good at playing it. His face changed color, his eyes, nose, mouth and mouth seemed to have lost all feeling due to the bitter taste. He gasped and said, I'm angry, this is not something children should do. The other girl was very excited and even stuck out her tongue and mocked him with two words. He still couldn't feel the bitterness in his mouth, sweat was pouring down his face. Suddenly he saw the pile of beer the two of them had just drank together. 
He ran all the way and gulped down beer cans with both hands. I had to finish a few cans of beer before I regained my composure. After that, he angrily asked loudly, who is his father, I have to teach him, and teach my daughter to be like that, naughty. Said and finished the last sip of beer in the can, at that moment D.A. Kin Kin responded to him with three words, my daughter. When he heard that, he stopped dead, even the girl couldn't hide her surprise. Truly a charming man, all the beer in his mouth was directly sprayed into D.A. Kin Kan's face because he was so surprised. Yet D.A. Kin Kan is not angry at all, she flipped her hair. Then stood up, she walked over and patted the girl's head. The little girl called out to her mother and then floated in the air. At this time, D.A. Kinkin slowly spoke, wanting to explain to him, the other girl was magically taken to another place by D.A. Kinkan. He still couldn't believe what he heard, shaking his head back and forth. Probably because he drank too much beer, his face turned red, he was still suspicious, ha, ha ha, this isn't Qingdao beer, why, why is it so strong, it's making me hallucinate. Or should I drink a few more pieces to help me stay awake? D.A. Kinkin asked him. Yet he actually did it, he picked up the can of beer and gulped it down, a dozen bottles down his stomach, after drinking that many more cans of beer, he stopped. He asked again, okay, who is his father? D.A. Kinkin still answered the same as before, it was him. He couldn't stand it anymore, he got closer, D.A. Kinkin and said loudly in her face, you ghost girl, is it an old disease that has come back, not a single word of truth in his mouth, Tian Fong to it, what do I say, remember, she and I have never had a relationship. D.A. Kinkin lifted up her bangs again, she said softly, more than ten years ago, when I was still a saint from the TNCAC, your magic was just starting to become a monster, killing many demon masters, the goose-headed ghosts formed a faction, plotted to join forces, and finally caught him. La Yes Fan replied, I remember, these despicable villains have used all their dangerous tricks, plotting one after another, poisoning, besieging, fighting, restraining. Consumption, dozens of days of non-stop poisoning, many training stations, in the middle of battle, constant assassinations, harassment, speeding up, people who suppress the attribute attack and consume, making it difficult for me to defend. D.A. Kinkin continued to say that after capturing him, the two factions of strange forces returned to an opposing state and were even able to overwhelm him. From now on, God prevents killing God, Buddha prevents killing Buddha, that is what they declare. Moreover, a few sinister and cunning guys had even greater ambitions and wanted to dominate the world, so they opened a civil war. He tried to remember, did he still have this trick? At that time, I was locked in a martial arts prison by you guys, waiting for my life. Suddenly D.A. Kinkin came up and pointed at his face with his finger and said, he is truly a son of luck, it seems his fate is not yet perfect. He replied that in this world, he is the only one who dares to be rude to me like that. D.A. Kinkin got closer and closer to him, she even said, who said she was a female ghost. He seemed to understand this trick of D.A. Kinkin all too well, he pushed her away and said in a serious voice, to the point, less of this trick. D.A. Kinkin stood away and said, you also know, at that time I practiced Min Naguyatsu Nu Tam Dharma. He replied, I know that the demon's techniques can be used to transform all other people's methods into your own, more powerful than the northern Min divine technique in the novel a hundred years ago. Because of this, many peerless great devils have appeared in our demon sect, however, this technique helps people double their magic power, and being called the omnipotent giant, there are very few men around us, after that, other people looked at her, causing her to have few people. D.A. Kinkin acknowledges your words, that's right, that year after the five old ghosts captured you, your mind was blown away, and they joined forces to plot to harm me. I had the delusion of sharing my magic power here, and then with one move I divided the divine pearl. As soon as D.A. Kin Kin finished speaking, a bag of something broke in his hand, causing water to splash. His face suddenly darkened, then clenched his fist again. When he opened it, in his palm was something sparkling. He said, these cunning old devils are so cunning and devious, making me suffer all the humiliation, the more I think about it, the angrier I become, where are they hiding, now I want to go and punch them to vent, this anger. D.A. Kinkin approached him again, touched his body and told him, Okay, okay, if he saw them now, he probably wouldn't be angry anymore. He looked a little surprised at D.A. Kinkin and asked, What are they doing? D.A. Kinkin told him that the heavenly hand demon Buddha was abolished by him, and he went into seclusion for ten days. Afterwards, he became enlightened and turned from a demon to enlightenment. Starting from when the great earth divine pearl compensated for the sins he had committed. 
He interrupted and asked, I heard that this guy is profound in Buddhist principles, sharp in his reasoning, clearly understands Buddhist principles, why is he still possessed? If we followed goodness, we really wouldn't be able to act. Seeing him say that, D.A. Kinkin said, Yin San Ghost Kong, controlling tens of thousands of ghosts, arrogantly thinking he was the only one in the world, but was killed by one of his pure Yang swords, 3,000 evil ghosts, sacred. It's so scary that my heart is broken, my soul is scattered, and now I'm temporarily in a mental hospital. After hearing it, he was very surprised, he hadn't finished D.A. Kinkin talking about other people. But when she was about to continue speaking, he stopped her. Leave, life is really different from life, I didn't expect that they would end up like that. D.A. Kinkin took the sparkling stone from his hand. She cradled it and observed it carefully, then told Van Fawn that he had become more and more terrifying since entering the lost realm, he could pop a beer bottle into a rare seven-colored illusory stone at will. If you use it to attract girls, you can't fault it, I see D.A. Kinkin keep going around and around, then pile up. Hey, don't beat me up, you haven't told me what you're doing yet. Yet D.A. Kinkin just took one look and his face turned red and he lowered his voice and said, What's wrong? D.A. Kinkin continued, After that, they joined forces to create a trap, they gave me the most erectile dysfunction drug in the world, in an attempt to disrupt my spirit. Of course I can't be easily psychologically manipulated, risking my life to escape. When he heard this episode, he couldn't help but be surprised, again, it was completely destroyed, oh my god. Remember that time D.A. Kinkin dragged his body without any strength along the wall and walked. Because her body was poisoned, she knew that running for a while could not run for a lifetime, so she began to think. If I must lose my cultivation, then it must be my own decision. D.A. Kinkin chanted the spell and disappeared from that place instantly. Did not expect that the exit was where he was being held, hundreds of chains covered his body. The surrounding chains were like torture and bound there with no way out. D.A. Kinkin then escaped and emerged from a nearby lake. She gingerly approached the place where he was blinded. At that time, his whole body was injured, there was blood all over his body, and he also fainted. D.A. Kinkin came closer, their faces seemed about to touch each other. Unexpectedly, Van Fon slowly opened his eyes, then D.A. Kinkin did something on his head. When he regained consciousness, before his eyes was a very indescribable scene. Thinking back, Van Fon didn't know what to say except to sweat. After a few seconds of silence, he suddenly got angry and shouted at her face, D.A. Kinkan, you and I, we are two different things, like water and half, why did you choose me as a detoxifying tool? D.A. Kinkan replied, covering his face and blushing, of course it's because you're handsome. The correct answer is to leave him speechless. He didn't believe the words D.A. Kinkin so he pointed his finger straight at her face and said loudly, Damn, speaking of handsomeness, that bastard who is known as super handsome as me, the second way, although he has cultivated a Buddha and entered a demonic body, his temperament is full of evil, he is handsome but still a scoundrel, both men and women want to eat. After listening, D.A. Kinkin only asked one question, so, and he sincerely said to D.A. Kinkan, please tell me. D.A. Kinkin was very excited, giggled and said, I know myself too. Then she told me, in fact, people also have bad thoughts, from the looks of it, it is because of my choice that I, the supreme demon sect, can now drink and chat with you. If I don't choose you, perhaps the person's fragrance will soon fade away, and the body of martyrdom will disappear. You just recognized me, as expected, the witch invested all the plans, clearly planning on her head, just now I was wrong when I thought she would be my dark brother, this reason I believe. D.A. Kinkin could only cover his mouth and giggle. Then he looked at D.A. Kinkin with an unpredictable look. Then held up D.A. Kinkin again, so the target was that stone. Without hesitation, he directly took it back from D.A. Kinkin's hand. D.A. Kinkin bowed his head without saying anything. He held the stone in his hand and pointed at it. Using some magic is causing the stone to transform. A light flashed across D.A. Kinkan's head. That is the magical power that Van Fon creates. Unexpectedly, in front of D.A. Kinkan right now was a sparkling ring. He showed the ring with a very cold expression and said, Then, let's get married. The ring is truly so beautiful and so bright. It made D.A. Kinkin feel fascinated, she closed her face to feel it and then reached out her hand. D.A. Kinkin received the ring from Van Fon's hand. Surprisingly, she held this ring but replied that the ring is very beautiful, I accepted it but I refused to get married. Van Fon couldn't help but be surprised, what do you want? 
D.A. King Ken replied, the meaning of the letter. He spoke loudly in frustration, perhaps she and Tian Tuit Fung had already finished negotiating, why did both of them refuse so frankly? D.A. King Ken knew this and laughed and asked ha ha, so what reason did she use to refuse him? Van Phan also recounted that the reason was because Tian Tuit Fung was afraid that if he was alone, bearing the name of my saint's son, he would be isolated by everyone around him, and he would be targeted by my enemies, making him even more dangerous, dangerous for it. D.A. King Ken laughed again and agreed with what Tian Tuit Fung said, she was right, the next problem he needed to face was still a lot. Although he is the most invincible and strongest in the world, below him there are also the three Tan Immortals, the four great families, the five sects, the eight top masters, all of whom are waiting to be revealed, hiding their whereabouts. There are many people among them who are looking at his supreme championship position. In addition, in the western part of the Chao, there are great Rakshasas, marshals such as the western region, southern Mani, and northern Hanli. The Eastern Federation calls itself the Kingdom of Heaven and controls the neighboring countries of the East Sea, all of which look at our dense aura. He still has many battles to fight and children will become his weakness. He immediately asked back, but, this place is full of big and small demons killing people like ants, not following the righteous path, will this place be safer? D.A. Kinkin said, you don't need to worry, it's been assigned to be a little devil of this planet, the old guys in here are also very sneaky about it, haven't you been fooled by it too? The two of them then sat down close to each other to talk easily. He asked, young people are so cunning, don't you need to worry about their future? D.A. Kinkin leaned her head on his shoulder and told him, I'm also a witch who brings disaster to the world, why don't you worry about me, you're really in a difficult situation, you don't know how to respond, what words? D.A. Kinkin then raised her hand to stop him, not letting him say anything more. She came closer and spoke while looking straight into his face, think about the ideal you were striving for before, although I am a demon in your mouth, I have never been interested in peace and stability, but after having it, it made me feel like changing my ways wasn't that bad. Her words made his heart ache. He hugged his left chest and said that suddenly having a child with the two most unlikely people made my heart feel a bit indignant. D.A. Kinkin giggled, hi hi, so you better let your heart adapt quickly. He blankly asked, huh, why? D.A. King can just told him one more thing, it was said that the fox who seduced the tiger man also gave birth to a daughter. Actually, when he heard this, he was shocked to the point of petrification. The scream of a man close to the gate echoed throughout the sky, what did she say? The noise was so loud that even people within a wide range of distances could feel it. Van Fon couldn't stand it any longer and launched like a rocket towards the end of the horizon. D.A. Kinkin seemed interested, she thought that everything was getting more and more interesting. As for Van Fon, he lost his face while redoing his hair, he panicked and remembered, it's impossible, it's impossible, the time he interacted with Ho Ka Han was to establish a diplomatic alliance with the Southwest, Dai Ming Kun Luan. I remember the interaction process that day very clearly, but that indescribable thing never happened. I myself keep asserting that it's not true. He paused for a moment and then recalled the memory. Twelve years ago, then Chao was still in the fight for the five old men, the great Lhasa nation of the West opened its heart to the East. The first step was to use the excuse of reincarnating between the great Lhasa Sun King and the nine-tailed demon King Ho Ka Han, Mian Gu, Bakta, and the fifth prince's envoys. Came to Dai Ming Kun Lun of the country of thousands of demons, called the Southwest God Pearl, and let him claim his identity. He, as a messenger of the Pearl, came alone to Kun Lun. That day he slashed the prince with a sword, the incident shocked the world. Min Kwok main palace, the body lies in a pool of blood. Some people knelt next to him in fear and exclaimed, It's gone, it's gone, what have you done? Behind the curtain is the silhouette of a beautiful woman, she raised her voice and said, The fifth prince, great Rakshasa Baki, was beheaded by someone with a sword, his reputation is indispensable, before he acted, he had thought about it, the mighty army of the great Lhasat country. The residence of the large and small demons of our great alliance, is about to disappear. The gods are rebelling, can you help? At that time, he replied, the king can rest assured, it was because he didn't want to fight, it was because he didn't want to fight that he sent a messenger to threaten Bakta, only by cutting him, the Rakshasa would not attack immediately, instantly. Hearing that, the person he called the king clapped his hands loudly. Then she kept praising him, not only did he have excellent martial arts, but he also had unmatched intelligence and courage. He replied, too complimentary, then she continued. 
even though the Great Lasat Nation has not yet mobilized its troops to attack, if this is used as a reason to be angry, forcibly telling me to submit to his eyes, the officials will change, and the real consciousness will be in chaos when it comes time to attack. He immediately replied, the internal structure of the great Rakshasa, on the surface of unity, the throne and the royal power were on guard against each other for ten years, unable to withstand a national war. If they want to use force to subdue people. He quickly took out the meter-long sword energy in his hand and shouted loudly and majestically, then let this sword answer. The wind gently let down the curtain to reveal half of Ho Kha Han's face. She asked softly and gracefully, Does Mr. Like that also want everyone to subdue him by force, is that any different from this great Lhasaq country? After speaking, she slowly stood up, through the thin curtain, her graceful appearance could be clearly seen. Ho Kha Han gently lifted the curtain, she slowly walked step by step towards him. Looking at her graceful figure made him momentarily stunned. Ho Kha Han stood on tiptoe and leaned close to his ear to whisper a few words, a small seafaring girl sandwiched between these great nations for peace, she could only obey, push, and get along to pay tribute to these small tricks. Then, Your Excellency, which one do you want? She looked straight into his eyes and continued asking, Do you want it all? With a blank face, he said just one word, friend. Ho Kha Han blankly asked again, friends. He seriously explained, we want to have friends, regardless of big or small, to live together in peace, to help each other in danger, to have equal covenants. Ho Kha Han couldn't help but burst out laughing, after a while, she held her stomach and laughed endlessly. He asked curiously, why was she smiling? Ho Kha Han laughed to the point of tears, she spread her hands to stop her, her face still joking, wait a minute, this is too stimulating, I can't react a bit, let me digest it a bit. After a few minutes, she regained her composure, raised her hand to caress her chest and sighed. Ho Kha Han gradually calmed down and gently put his hand on the hilt of his sword that was sticking straight into the ground and said softly, then. And before this sword could stand here. Please teach me more, as she finished speaking, her eyes emitted a bright red light that seemed to shock him, his eyes immediately turned red, his face became dull as if hypnotized. In reality, he raised his hand and rubbed his chin, thinking, here's the problem, I came back on the second day, now that I think about it, I don't have this memory, what is the meaning of this? He reached out and massaged the top of his head vigorously, his eyes closed tightly in discomfort, painfully pensive, deep in thought, reasoning was not his forte, still doing what he was good at. Regaining his spirits, he clasped his hands behind his waist and said with a bright smile, after decades of life and death struggle, facing all kinds of plots and deceptions, this deity has cultivated such a powerful body, no matter who comes first, our eyes must tell the truth. That's right, to Ho Kha Han this cunning fox must tell the truth. Having finished speaking, he also flew away, a golden light streaking across the sky flew away at terrible speed. Our saint was confused and completely forgot the purpose of this trip. On the side of the main hall of Dai Ming Kwok, the god shouted Dai La, the special envoy of the country arrived. He lurked outside and observed inside, his mind surging with speculations that today they had an affair. After thinking about it, he gritted his teeth and grimaced in anger, that's not right, I shouldn't pretend to be angry in front of this evil water demon and point loudly at her nose, that would be cool, true to my name, Tun, why do I have to run away? Confused, he kept clasping his hands behind his back and walking back and forth around the door, thinking as he walked, what should he say? After a while, he pointed straight and shouted loudly, Ho Kha Han, did you do something to me at that time, tell me the truth? After finishing his action, he quickly retracted his hand and shook his head, wasn't this a bit too harsh? While he was bored, a child's voice rang out behind him, Dad, what are you doing? He blurted out, coming to bother the female elf Ho Kha Han. The other girl asked again, why did dad have to find mom to cause such trouble, he said of course it was because. Only then did he realize his actions, he immediately turned his head and shouted loudly. Turning around, Tui and Tuyin was standing right behind him. He just stared at her without saying anything, the two of them looked at each other with puzzled eyes. After a while, Tui and Tuyin smiled brightly and said, it's me, dad. He put his hands on his chest and breathed a sigh of relief, so that's how it was. After a moment, he thought about it in his head and saw that something was wrong, his face changed color and his eyes widened. He turned around to look at Tuyin Tuyin again and shouted, Which one, which one, say what? 
Outside the main hall of Dai Ming Kwok, foreign enemies invaded Dean Bian. Enemy troops continuously attacked and invaded the palace. He looked up again and couldn't help but worry. He was lost. He used the worst method to go out on the field. He couldn't be on the right side causing a big stir. Immediately he clasped his hands together, a blazing fire burning. He raised his head and shouted loudly, the universe turning upside down. The universe turned upside down, after he entered the upper realm of heaven, one of the ten great minerals with great learning could bring the entire space island back to the state it was in three seconds ago, causing countless powerful enemies to be defeated. This great learning is now being used by him here. Thirty seconds ago, back to the time Tuyin Tuyin spoke, it was this one. Instead of getting angry, he put his hand on his forehead to wipe away the sweat and sighed. Luckily he had this trick. He put his hand on Tuyin Tuyin's head and said, Little friend, don't call me dad around. After advising her, he turned around to search, Who are your family members? Why are you running around in this royal court? It's very dangerous. Tuyin Tuyin looked up at him and said, Your mother is the female elf that dad just talked about. Dad is that person. He patted her head and smiled softly, explaining, Is that right? Another loud scream rang out, causing the temple to shake. The moment the invading enemy attacks again takes place 30 seconds later. Instead of using the magic to move away, he held his head with both hands and roared, It was over. He used the worst method to appear, he couldn't be in the right gang and cause a big commotion, and he couldn't reverse it. At this point it was too late, he knelt down on the ground helplessly, he bowed his head to the ground and shouted in panic, too, too hasty, almost messed up my mind, I have never had any experience in fighting, fighting with a child, what to do, what to do. He put his hands on his knees, bent his back and whispered to Tuyin Tuyin, child, did your mother really tell you that? Tuyin Tuyin replied in a clear voice, yes, sir, you have finally come to visit me. She held up the teddy bear and happily showed off, 12 years ago, from childhood to adulthood, I've been up on the roof of the palace, waiting for the star, waiting for the moon, waiting for someone to come see me. Yesterday I saw a shooting star, I prayed hoping that dad would fall like a hero from the sky to save us. I didn't expect that my wish would come true so quickly. His eyes also filled with tears as he thought, 12 years, it seemed she was right. Faced with the simplicity with which the child longed for a father like him, my saint suddenly felt ashamed and a little torn in his heart. Thinking about it, he sat down and spread his arms wide, tears streaming down his face, apologizing, Daughter, I'm late, come here with me. Tuyin Tuyin walked up to face him and looked at him with sad eyes, Sir, please quickly save me and me. He frowned and wondered, What do you mean by that? Tuyin Tuyin immediately replied, Dai La Sat Nation sent messengers to want Dai Min Nation to attack, but yesterday suddenly sent a letter asking for marriage with mother. I want, I want you to marry the second prince Rakshasa. He frowned angrily, got married, this old rascal didn't give up, he remembered this every year, taking advantage of my initial plan for the divine pearl. Hundreds of wastes waiting to be rebuilt, secretly causing trouble, the enemy's heart is not yet dead with that cunning fox who doesn't say anything, but still dares to plot against my daughter. He stood up and held Tuyin Tuyin's hand, determined to say, go, Tuyin Tuyin raised his eyes and asked blankly, why are you going? He said loudly, I will teach these raccoon hunting dogs a lesson for you. Tuyin Tuyin heard that and happily hugged him, really, father, you are so trustworthy. He saw that the girl was happy again, so he closed his eyes and pursed his lips in joy. Why did this child praise him so the corner of his mouth couldn't help but smile gradually on his lips? He picked her up and gently reminded her to hug her tightly. Tuyin Tuyin still beamed and replied, Okay. The two of them soared into the sky together and left, towards the main hall of Min Kwok. A messenger rang out to report, Respected Queen of Dai Minkwok, a day has passed, the second prince of Dai La Sat of our country proposed marriage to the princess of Dai Minkwok, have you made the arrangements yet? Ho Kha Han sat cross-legged on the chair and lightly propped himself up with one hand, my child is still young, not yet of marriageable age, it's not too late to wait a little longer to consider this matter. The messenger smiled lightly and reminded the queen, the holy king had already thought about this matter for the queen, he just needed to welcome the princess to the holy capital, receive the best education, and be close to the second prince, the relationship was already attached, they become even more connected, and when they reach the appropriate age, they will hold a solemn six-day and six-night event. The great Ming nation can also enjoy the protection of our great La Sat nation forever, forever and ever. Ho Kha Han immediately replied, This king only has one daughter, if the distance is too far, his heart cannot bear it at all. 
The messenger still insisted on explaining, It's okay, it's okay, the Holy King has thought it through, if not, the Holy King will send a teacher over. Ho Khe Han closed his eyes and said softly, Although our Dai Ming country is a country in the border region, there is no shortage of people who are well-educated and knowledgeable, so there is no need to waste any more effort. The envoy made a cunning face and asked, Is that right? Does your country have someone who can compare to the title that the Holy King has worked so hard to arrange for the princess? At the same time, the man wearing a tight black cloak stood next to the messenger, his body constantly emitting a terrifying blue aura. In just a blink of an eye, the entire main hall was covered by the green gas of that black-shirted man. Ho Khe Han was a little scared, she opened her eyes wide and asked, Who is this person? The messenger immediately introduced, the first disciple of the national master, known as the dark magician, the ruler of life and death. The saint of peace and anger came specially, the holy king bestowed upon him the name of the teacher, and the god of death knew the meaning of death. The god of knowledge lowered his voice mysteriously, saying that this old man had never accepted a disciple in this life, I heard that his highness the princess of the great Ming kingdom was more talented than anyone else, yesterday I saw that her qualifications were truly extraordinary, and she could inherit the wealth, old man's fortune. The messenger standing next to him added, Since our country is so sincere, Her Highness the Queen will not refuse the kindness of the Holy King, will she? Looking at the man of death who radiated hidden intentions, Ho Khe Han without the slightest fear, she calmly responded, Worshipping a master is an important matter, let me think about it further. Suddenly, behind the two messengers, a familiar voice rang out, No need to think any more, it already has a teacher. The two messengers carefully turned around and asked, Who are you? Behind them was the male lead, carrying the little fox and walking in coldly. The atmosphere suddenly became strangely quiet before his radiant aura. Even Ho Khe Han looked extremely surprised. Looking at him holding his daughter in his arms, Ho Ka Ha suddenly smiled warmly. She raised her voice, I said who is it, without ceremony, without notice, has entered the hall of this great nation of mine. Having said that, she slowly walked towards him then respectfully bowed his head to pay respects and pay his respects to the saint. Why didn't you tell me before you came? The two messengers were startled when they heard that, their minds were filled with countless questions about the newly arrived saint. The purple-shirted man whispered into the ear of the god of death, Master, yes, what should we do? I heard that this saint unified the divine continent, no one could defeat him. The breath of death responded, the divine pearl was initially determined, many things were waiting for the Buddha to happen, how could the holy venerable come here, and still have time to suddenly come to receive the eldest son, could it be that he is not willing to let me recognize him, you should put on a play. The purple shirt nodded and smiled cunningly, we just got here, even if they wanted to secretly deliver the news, they couldn't have come that fast. Understanding their thoughts, Ho Khe Han glanced at them and smiled faintly. She looked at the male lead and continued, Yes, could it be that the saint is spiritually connected to the slave family, or in his heart misses the slave family, secretly visiting the slave family's daily life from time to time? Speculating at this point, Ho Khe Han covered his face in embarrassment and hate, It's not like people shower and change clothes in the morning, they've already arrived. He frowned, speechless, not knowing what to say. At that moment, the little fox ran to Ho Khe Han's arms and shouted, Mom! Ho Khe Han patted his daughter's head and said, Good girl, why did you bring someone here? He gently passed by the two of them, his expression dark. He thought to himself, This cunning fox knows how to take advantage of the deity. Ho Khe Han leaned close to the male lead's ear to encourage him, but the master still did not believe that he was a saint. The spirit of death continued, The saint venerable of the first divine bead wanted to recognize my eldest son, of course I would not dare to take it, if I pretended to be an eastern saint venerable, this crime would not be a small one. Let me test your authenticity for the sake of the new divine pearl's honor. The little fox pouted and said, Mom, this old man is as cunning as us, using this excuse, winning or losing, he won't offend anyone. The grim reaper waved his hand in front of his face, next, a drop of black blood fell, and mysterious black gas appeared in front of him. As soon as the drop of blood touched the ground, the dark dharma formation immediately appeared. In the middle of the magic formation, a god of death holding a scythe gently rose up. As soon as he looked at Ho Khe Han, he realized that this was the technique of summoning the gods of the world. The purple shirt confidently boasted that in this world one could have the certainty of a god, the power of the great sages who had been taught the law could be counted on the fingers of one hand, 
In the God of death who possessed the power of life and death was also an existence that made people are afraid of the God himself. The spirit of death spread its arms and shouted loudly, all mortal attacks were ineffective, absorbing all living beings. He glanced at him and said, it's not that magical, I hope this saint will teach me more. Standing in front of that terrifying power, the male lead was extremely calm. While next to her, the little fox's body was trembling, the little girl said in confusion, why does it feel so cold? He rubbed the little fox's head, he transmitted golden power to the little girl. Kindly ask, do you feel better? The little fox happily smiled and closed his eyes, yes, it's not cold anymore, dad. The angel of death looked at this scene of father and son's deep love, and his expression became more and more evil. He swung his arms forward, attacking the male protagonist directly. The god of death, holding a scythe behind his back, quickly rushed towards him, even though his back was turned to his opponent, the male protagonist had already realized the danger behind him. He coldly said, what kind of magic is this, I heard that eastern magic has transformed into a god. The two fake people heard that, their eyes forming an O shape and their mouths forming an A's, extremely surprised. He turned around and stomped his feet on the ground, a bright light emitted around his body, this made the other two guys open their mouths so wide that their chins almost fell off. The fiery deity appeared in a majestic form, completely overwhelming the god of death. He added, I am both a god. The two messengers sweat dropped and stammered, this, this is impossible. The current incarnation of the male lead raised his hands, avoiding death. Next, he slammed his palms together, and the death god that the other guy confidently boasted about disappeared like the wind in just a minute. This attack from the male protagonist even created wind force that blew the two old messengers away. He instructed the two messengers to tell your king that although the divine pearl was only in its infancy, as long as I was there, even the surrounding states would not be able to touch a part of it. After the attack, the other two men's naked bodies trembled and replied, Yes, yes. The male lead waved his hand and shouted loudly, Go away, go back and ask how your white prince was crippled twelve years ago. With just a wave of his hand, the two messengers were once again sent flying like arrows accompanied by pitiful screams. The palace echoed with the long, belated apologies of the two messengers. After the match, the smoke and dust gradually dispersed, and the male protagonist appeared coolly. The little fox had to say, Tortoise shell is so cool. The little girl shook Ho Kha Han's hand, Mom, Mom, were you the one who gave the signal for Dad to come rescue her? Ho Kha Han shook his head, I don't know anymore, the Rakshasa messenger came too suddenly, how did the saint know about this? He confusedly replied, Ah, my deity. Suddenly the little fox screamed loudly, making the male protagonist and the fox bewildered and not understanding anything. The little girl jumped up and laughed happily, ha ha, mom was tricked, she was finally lured out by me. The little fox pointed at the male lead and asked, is he really my father? He opened his mouth in bewilderment, Ho Kha Han could only smile helplessly looking at his daughter. She let out a sigh. Admit it, it's not wrong, she is indeed my mother's daughter. The little fox high-fived his mother and shouted, two or three. The little girl ran around the male protagonist, I finally found dad. Tired of running, the little fox crawled into her mother's arms and cooed, Mom, Mom, Ho Kha Han asked incredulously, Hmm. The little fox leaned close to his mother's ear and said, When it comes to handsomeness, his father only gets an average of four or five points, he's a bit stupid, only a little powerful, why does mother aim for him like that? Smelling the smell of being slandered, he got angry, Hey, what are you two whispering about, let me hear it. Ho Kha Han cleverly lied, it was probably because the good times and the good times came together, that's why he became the right person at the right time. Hearing that, the little fox could only stay silent. He got angry, hey don't treat me like I'm invisible, what are these two people? Ho Kha Han was angry, hmm, he really didn't know how to love flowers or pearls at all. She lifted her skirt, putting on a seductive look and continued, there is only one set of this silk and silk dress, it was completely torn by his airflow just now, let's go with them to the palace to change first. He replied with wide eyes, thank you. But Ho Kha Han wouldn't forgive him so easily, she took the male lead's arm and walked away in his panic. Looking at his parents' affection, the little fox was also happy. The little girl leisurely chased after me, my dear family, wait for me. In the palace, the little fox lay on the bed playing with his stuffed animal, the fox went to change clothes, only the male lead stood there not knowing what to do. 
he suddenly stared at the curtain where Ho Kha Han was changing clothes. Her hot body appeared vaguely, making the male lead infatuated. Embarrassed, he quickly turned his face away. The little fox teases the male lead, why doesn't dad look like that, or does dad criticize mom for not being pretty? He closed his eyes and replied, this girl, what are you thinking, this is called respect. The little fox continued, anyone outside the male who looked at her mother would be stunned and freeze for five seconds, proving that her mother had charm, the longer she looked at her, the more attractive she became. He asked, what did your mother teach you every day? The little fox answered honestly, using all his charm to conquer his opponent, using softness to overcome hardness, resisting and welcoming. Ho Kha Han heard the conversation between the two of you, what do you think, our girls are smart. She walked out gracefully wearing a black chang sam, full of charm. He couldn't hide his emotions and blushed and rolled his eyes. He pretended to cough and cough to regain composure, no one taught children like her. Ho Kha Han proudly talked about her daughter, she learned very quickly, in the jungle, these chimpanzees and tigers were all tamed by her, and they listened to everything they said. He shook his head, said nonsense, said quickly, what exactly is this? Ho Kha Han patted his daughter's head, ever since she understood this, she always wanted to know who her father was, but I didn't tell her. The male lead asked if his father was a saint, would he lose face? Ho Kha Han continued, so I played a game with him to let him find it himself. The little fox continued his mother's words, I turned over the foreign affairs index of the great kingdom and listed out the people who could be my father. Then try each person one by one, there are only a dozen people left, of which there are three, unexpectedly, dad came to find him himself, after that, I pushed the boat along, told my dad to come save me, and was able to get more information from my mom. He slammed his hands together, I understand, the quality of education, living in false teachings, is that right? Ho Kha Han raised her voice, as the next generation queen of the great kingdom, under the protection of the great nation, freely roaming horizontally and vertically, this is a skill that must be mastered, and also a royal path for the future to have. You can protect yourself and protect thousands of people of this demon race. He heard that and was quiet for a long while. After a while he spoke, then he was no longer a princess, just a normal happy child. Both Ho Kha Han and the little fox were stunned when they heard what he said. Ho Kha Han sighed, the world is not yet peaceful, royalty like me must shoulder this responsibility. He clenched his fist, the peace we want is not just peace in a country, but so that everyone who desires peace can enjoy it. I hope you can live a carefree life. The little fox jumped up happily and asked again, really, people hate being saints so much, they have to learn so many rituals, learn so much intelligence about relationships with surrounding countries, they can't even speak the food they eat. Ho Kha Han sadly recounted, 12 years ago, when you said this, I thought you were a foolish person who liked to show off. But now I really hope that day comes true. He was startled as if he realized something, he pointed his finger at Ho Kha Han and asked, really, but after half a day, you still haven't told me what you did to me, why don't I remember, nothing. The little fox also wondered, mom, did you use that trick on dad? Ho Kha Han admitted to his daughter, as expected of being our family's protege, so smart, hi hi. He looked at the mother and daughter wondering what the trick was. Ho Kha Han thoroughly explained that our great kingdom was established by hundreds of people, not only relying on tricks, but also having a strong future generation, the important thing is love and strength, considering family background and power. But those target characters are all amazing actors, unrivaled in power, people with supernatural powers, or have wives, or are married, or have many things attached to them. If they don't have tricks to watch over the house, how can they ever succeed? As well as idea, the little fox continued. His mother said that the nine-tailed fox is naturally charming and charming, but the most powerful is its charm. It has a natural talent to charm living beings. It can only be used once in a lifetime. The person who gets hit by the trick will obediently listen to instructions. Mom, more than 10 years ago, although dad was powerful, he still had a gap with the high-ranking masters, right? Why did he choose him? The male lead also wondered the same thing. Yes, why was he looking right at me? Ho Kha Han mused, maybe one only time, someone's honesty and bravery will make him angry, hi hi. He blushed and sighed and sat down on the ground. He angrily pointed at Ho Kha Han, you women are really dangerous. Ho Kha Han did not give up and replied, you women, are there other people besides me in your stomach, tell me. The little fox was excited, people also wanted to hear his father's story. 
he told a long story for his mother and son to listen to. The three of them continued to toss and turn, arguing endlessly for several hours. An hour later, the little fox stood up and said, If they don't want to marry dad, it's better to let dad and mom get married first. Hearing that, both the male lead and Ho Kha Han stood still and looked at each other. Ho Kha Han shook his head, This is not possible. The little fox sadly asked his mother why. The male protagonist interrupted, The marriage of the leaders of the two countries is not just a matter between two people, if the leader of one country marries me, it means the Diamond Nation will be admitted to Shenzhou, the opposing forces in the Diamond Nation will absolutely not allow it, permission, will cause a dangerous civil war in the Diamond Kingdom. Ho Kha Han patted his daughter's head, that's right, it's even more impossible to want Saint Venerable to live in Dai Min Kwok's son-in-law, the divine prefecture has just been decided, the holy venerable is only Din Hai Divine Chow, we have no choice. The little fox lowered his head sadly, he clearly found his father, but still forced him to be a fatherless child, how pitiful. The little girl stood up and shouted loudly, I hate you too. Having finished speaking, the little fox struggled and ran out. The male lead awkwardly called out, wait. He looked at Ho Kha Han and saw her holding his hand. Ho Kha Han shook his head to signal the male lead not to chase the little fox. He hesitated, I. Ho Kha Han told him, this is what being born into the emperor must endure, it is like that, I am like that, my mother was like that too. What I'm lucky about is that I used my will to choose this child's father. He turned around and walked away, echoing, only children, parents cannot disappoint. I will think of a way, hearing this sentence from the male lead, Ho Kha Han was a bit surprised. She laughed happily, before going to stay with him some more, knowing that you are his father actually makes him very happy. He turned to look at Ho Kha Han in disbelief, how did she know? Ho Kha Han shook his tail and answered, When we foxes are happy, our tails will sway involuntarily, much more honestly than our mouths. He asked more curiously, looking at her tail wagging back and forth, Isn't she very happy? Ho Kha Han did not deny it, at this time, there was indeed a little. At night, the little fox sat sadly on the palace roof, her eyes looking into the distance. My eyes couldn't control themselves and filled with tears, he gently walked closer to the girl. The little fox pouted, turned his face away, not bothering to look at the male protagonist. He sat next to his daughter, he glanced at the little fox. There was an indescribable distance between the two of them, and they were both silent for a long time. The male lead gradually moved closer, closing the distance. Looking at the little fox's tail waving, he remembered Ho Kha Han's words, when we foxes are happy, our tails will sway voluntarily. Only then did the male lead dare to say sorry. The little fox replied, there's nothing to apologize for, adults all have a lot of things they can't say, it's normal for you to be a child and not understand things. The male lead thought to himself, if it wasn't the fox that said this child was shaking its tail, it was actually very happy, the child's thoughts are truly difficult to understand. He gently rubbed the little fox's head, making her startled and feel a bit of warmth. Even though he was happy in his heart, the little fox still tried to pretend to be angry. Why are you touching my head like that? You and dad are not close at all. Dad doesn't love you at all. He kindly asked his daughter, when we first meet, I want to give you a gift. What gift do you want? The little fox's mood is happy again. Really, you can have whatever you want. He nodded in assurance. Yes, the little fox pointed to the sky. I want a star. To make his child happy, the male lead did not hesitate to agree with her. Yes. Now I will pick a star for you, follow me. He injected a stream of his golden spiritual energy into the little fox's body. The girl's body slowly floated without trunk following the male lead's hand movements. The little fox happily shouted, I'm flying up, ha ha I'm flying up. He deployed the technique, he and his daughter were slowly flying into the air. The daughter saw this and was very excited, after all, this was the first time she had experienced this feeling, she was excited, shouted, higher, higher, he replied calmly, okay. Then both of them flew higher and higher, the girl freely spread her arms to enjoy, her small eyes sparkling with excitement. The sky is getting closer and closer, it can be clearly seen that today in the sky there are many stars shining brightly. The two of them kept flying until the moon became a giant fruit appearing before their eyes. The girl couldn't help but let out a cry of joy. She looked intently into that vast space and said, for the first time seeing the star and moon so close. 
Seeing that, he immediately turned to his lovely little daughter and said, Look carefully, I'm going to pick stars. The little girl's eyes sparkled, she happily said, Yes Dada. After that, he immediately deployed his power, a group of small rays of light appeared around his body. Next, he raised his hand straight towards the direction of the moon and small stars and spoke, his mouth swallowing the sun and moon, his hand could pick up the spirit, move the star to move. Then a large source of energy shot from his hand towards the stars. He used his strength to pull him towards him and said, The star is coming. A star suddenly flashed in the air. The little girl standing next to her felt very interesting. Then the star suddenly rushed towards him at extremely fast speed, like a giant fireball rushing towards him. That star quickly headed straight towards the earth, the speed was amazing. Under the earth, because of that fire red star approaching, the sky became red. People were panicked, not knowing what was going on, some people worriedly exclaimed, it's gone, it's gone, is the comet falling? On Ho Kha Han's side, seeing that, from the window, she looked up at the high sky, perhaps she secretly guessed what was going on in her heart, she smiled helplessly and said, the saint is still the saint, always, likes to riot. The star slowly approached in front of the two people, the little girl covered her eyes in fear and exclaimed, I'm about to fall, save my life, save my life. When he saw his daughter scared, he gently comforted her, don't be afraid, I'm here. Then he vigorously moved forward, use your hand to touch the other star. Then deploy the technique, accept tutti vu precepts. The star's light gradually decreases, speed also decreases. Then suddenly became tiny. The little girl was astonished as if she couldn't believe what was happening before her eyes. Because the giant star from before had turned into a small ball flying in my father's hand. He held the little star in his hand and approached the girl. Then gently said, take it. After saying that, he gave that little star to his daughter, she was so excited that she stammered speechless, this, this is the star, it's so beautiful. He smiled gently and replied, it's okay if you like it, however, after the girl took it, she stubbornly turned away and said in a sulky tone. Don't think that taking just one star can please you, you are very difficult to please, perhaps thinking that her father didn't care about her before, she said that. When he saw that, he couldn't help but laugh, she saw that she was being laughed at and turned around angrily, looking at her father and asking, what are you laughing at? He replied, your mother told me that when you are happy, you will shake your tail, she realized that at this moment her tail was wagging, as if she was feeling very happy in her heart. Being said to her heart, the little girl angrily punched him lightly and denied, no, people hate her father very much, it's not fun, she hasn't visited them for so long, it will harm her mother and me, bully. He stroked the little girl's head and said sincerely, sorry. In the future, someone dares to come and make trouble with you and your mother, look at this star and call me, even if we are thousands of miles away, I will come immediately. The little girl innocently asked back, really, it wasn't just a courtesy. He suddenly picked her up and fondly said, really, your father is very powerful, I said I could do it. When the little girl responded to her father like that, she was very happy, a bright smile appeared on her small face and she replied to her father, dad, I believe in you. Him holding her up high like that was indeed a bit cold, the wind blowing past made the little girl unable to hold back a sneeze. Seeing that, he held the little girl in his arms and told her, the star has been picked, let's go home, the little girl turned to look at her father and nodded in agreement. On the way down he asked her, dad still didn't know your name, she replied, your name is Tuyin Tuyin, the word Tuyin has cursive on the top, hearing that he nodded and exclaimed, Tuyin Tuyin, what a child, good name, I remember it. Down below, looking up at the bright sky. Ho Kha Han stared up, I've been unconscious since I realized it. The figure he held in his arms appeared before him. The two of them were holding hands, talking and laughing happily. When Ho Kha Han saw this scene, she was very happy, she looked at them with affectionate, satisfied eyes. Giving back his daughter to Ho Kha Han, he now realized that it was getting late, he had to quickly go back, even though he wanted to, he couldn't continue to stay here anymore, he said, it's late, you two rest early, there's still work to do in the country, I have to go first. Little Tuyin Tuyin stood to one side, grabbed her mother's hand, then waved at her father and said, Dad, please come visit me often, perhaps deep down in her heart she always yearns for a father's affection. I immediately replied, approved, crossed my arms. When their hands touched, the girl quickly added that if she twisted her arms, she wouldn't be able to go back on her word for a thousand years. 
Then little Tuyan Tuyan turned to her mother and said, No, my father and I have to shake hands with my mother before we can count. He scratched his head awkwardly. It seemed like having to face Ho Kha Han still made him very embarrassed. Suddenly a hand came in front of him. It turned out that Ho Kha Han had proactively raised her hand to shake his hand at him. He suddenly froze for a few seconds, seeing that, Tuyan Tuyan gently reminded him, Hurry up, Dad. He now smiled and raised his hand. Two people clasped hands together. He said, words don't need to be said anymore, and Ho Kha Han shyly covered his hands and smiled in response, of course he had to say, otherwise it wouldn't be considered a promise, Tuyan Tuyan once again reminded dad, hurry up and go father. He was so embarrassed, she said, wringing her hands, promising a hundred years, cannot be changed. After that, it was time for him to leave, flying away, not forgetting to smile and wave to mother and child. Ho Kha Han and his mother smiled contentedly, looking regretfully at his figure slowly disappearing into the distance. The full moon still shines brightly in the sky. He was gently soaring through the air. He closed his eyes and thought back to what had just happened and suddenly smiled. After a moment of stupid laughter like that, he realized himself. He clutched his head in panic because he was aware of his current state of mind and exclaimed, Oh my god, what's wrong with my deity, why are you so crazy? Ah, damn, am I being psychologically manipulated, he said, holding his face. Take a deep breath, take a deep breath, then he tried to calm himself down. Storm-like air currents appeared, rushed towards the sky high. Golden rays of light appeared around him. Then he gently exhaled the air. The cosmic sky at this time appeared giant bright lightning bolts. He thought, thinking that there was such a lovely girl, I liked it and felt happy, this thought created a new super magic. That magic is called, destroying heaven and earth. He was now floating in the air. Thoughts kept appearing in my head, my children came so suddenly, I felt a bit unfamiliar, but also with three people, oh my god, I wasn't prepared at all, what should I do, what should I do? Then suddenly he suddenly remembered something, maybe he had thought of someone who could solve his current pain for him, he suddenly patted his head and said, yes, find Van Ngu Fon to try it out. He is known as a peerless strategist whose plans are higher than the sky. Say it and go, he rushed to find Van Ngu Fon. The view from above is beautiful, the high mountains are close together, flocks of birds are fluttering in flight, a mist covers the entire scene. Then a house appeared, is the pre-structural variation. He leisurely stood in front of the door of that house. He walked up, then suddenly stopped and faltered. He pondered, what should I say to this guy now? While he was still deep in thought, the door of the house in front of him suddenly opened. The door suddenly opened, Van Ngu Fon sat leisurely, not even bothering to turn around and say to him, don't you always push the door straight in when you come in. This time, it turns out Van Ngu Fon had already realized what was happening, his appearance was in front of the door. So without waiting for him to enter, he opened the door. He was found in such an awkward situation and was a bit speechless. Then he slowly walked into the room, then suddenly startled. Because he saw Van Ngu Fon leisurely sitting and cooking, on the chessboard was a steaming hot pot of smoke emitting a fragrant scent. Van Ngu Fon slowly stirs the food in the pot. Then eat loudly and call out to me, quickly come here and enjoy the blurry food I made. He walked over slowly and sat down, then he picked up his chopsticks and slowly picked out a piece of hot meat from the hot pot. He brought it to his mouth to eat and then slowly felt grateful, took the chessboard and cooked hot pot, only you in this world can do that. Van Ngu Fon suddenly let out a sigh. He replied, For the sake of the unification of the continent, I have already planned everything, coming back now is just to enjoy life, this table for me is nothing more than grilling meat, making wine, having fun, he hugged Cole face. Seeing him say that, he suddenly thought, in his mind appeared the previous image of Van Ngu Fon, from ancient times, the strategist was always for his own ideals, moving horizontally and vertically, defying the sky to change destiny, good at scheming. But as for this guy, the realm of plotting has reached its extreme, grand interpretation of math, calculated to the fullest extent of heaven. Human nature conspires, divinity yang plots, but before God can calculate all possibilities in the future, all yin and yang have no resistance. But after just this calculation, he had exhausted his ability to calculate for the rest of his life, from the calculation of heaven to the realm of the whole world. 
Then the scene changed to the image of two figures standing side by side looking aimlessly into the distance. It was him and Van Ngu Phan from before. Van Ngu Phan clasped his hands behind his back and spoke, The predetermined God, there are many more, things waiting for us to do. Van Ngu Phan turned and said, My destiny only stops at this moment, and thanks to the protection and maintenance of the saint, I found a small wooden house, if you have any problems, you can come to me to talk. Having finished speaking, he disappeared, leaving only the saint in that scene, or was he standing alone, still looking steadfastly at the scene before him? Switch back to the current scene in Van Ngu Phan's small house. He slowly took the large bottle of wine in his hand and poured it into the cup and asked him, So what is the reason for the great amnesty of the Holy Venerable today? He felt a bit awkward, raised his hand and scratched his head. Seeing the other person so confused, Van Ngu Phan smiled lightly then threw the wine glass to him and said, Do you have a friend who has recently encountered something troublesome? Caught a glass of wine, heard Van Ngu Phan say so. He firmly slammed his hand on the table, hastily said, Yes, that's it. Van Ngu Phan picked up the piece of meat and chewed it and continued to speculate, He knows how to fall in love and have children, right? He continued to pound the table and say, no wrong, no wrong, suddenly realized something was wrong. He pointed straight at the other person and asked, how do you know, you have returned to the realm of heaven and earth, right? Van Ngu Phan denies it, not at all, let's continue talking about your friend. He breathed out, he turned to look at Van Ngu Phan, said hesitantly, that friend of mine. That friend of mine was always busy with work, had never been with the opposite sex, and suddenly had a child with the most unlikely women, he didn't know what to do at all. After saying that, he slowly picked up the cup of wine, drank the glass of wine in one gulp, then put the cup on the table. He crossed his arms and continued to tell the story, he came to me to negotiate, and as you know, I'm a single person who hasn't had a relationship so I don't have any experience. Hearing such an interesting story, Van Ngu Phan chewed and said curiously, This is even bloodier than a TV series, virtual realism, continue. He was now blushing, he was embarrassed about lying, there was no need to continue, I couldn't help him anymore. He continued to make up stories, but since people came to ask me, it means they have trust in me, I also had to do something, so I came to find you. Then he turned to Van Ngu Phan for help, please come up with some ideas, Van Ngu Phan slowly put down his chopsticks. He stretched his arms and said, it seems that our saint is still as enthusiastic, it is not a big matter of the end of the world or any destruction or separation, so he is also in such a hurry about other people's matters. Being teased like that by him, he couldn't hold back his anger. He grabbed Van Ngu Phan's collar and pressed him against the wall, angrily saying, Because brothers are going up mountains of swords and going down to seas of fire, whatever happens to you, I will do my best. Van Ngu Phan saw that he had lost his temper and took it away, conciliatory tone. Yes yes yes, you are enthusiastic as always, I give you ten points for this spirit. Then, he continued to say, Let go, let go, my small body can't bear it anymore. Hearing that, he let go of him, he gradually calmed down his earlier anger and slowly said, Okay, I'll give you some ideas quickly, so I can go home so you can enjoy the food. Van Ngu Phan replied, I think I think, then he saw his serious appearance waiting for his advice. I couldn't help but burst out laughing, his laughter echoed throughout the house. Van Ngu Phan laughed loudly, seeing that, he was very angry. Seeing his serious expression, Van Ngu Phan laughed and said, No, no, I can't stop laughing anymore. He shouted, What kind of joke are you playing, now do you know how sexy you look? Van Ngu Phan cleared his throat and held back his laughter, he asked in a loud voice, You know that 15 years ago I used the only great arrow in this life. Seeing him ask that, he suddenly wondered why he suddenly mentioned this again. Van Ngu Phan continued, I once told you, the great arrow of heaven and earth is a magical calculation that calculates all possible possibilities, everyone plans deep in heaven and earth. In fact, only those who experience it know the secret. What comes to mind is not the nine palaces, the four tables, the sixteen ghosts, the great calculations of the heavenly stems, the insignia and inscriptions like that. It's true scene by scene, starting from the beginning, seeing every possible possibility. Possibility of failure, near failure, success of all kinds. Hearing all kinds of words, he asked confusedly. Van Ngu Phan then explained, That's right, there are also servants to unify the world, but five years ago, in order to save me, you turned into a skeleton. 
There is also the end result of being unified by the devil's hands, then using the force of a knife to crush the living creature, the divine pearl belongs to one person. When he heard that, he was very surprised, he slammed his hands on the table and said, it's so miraculous, so what should I do now? Then Ngu Fan gently nodded, he said, your encounter, the story of you and Fan Tian to it, D.A. can can and Tuyin Tuyin. Is that since the math just started, I have chosen a certain outcome that has a starting point in the future. When he heard this, he was surprised, his eyes were wide open and his mouth was exclamation, is that so stupid? Then he pointed straight at Van Ngu Fan and said, so you know everything. Van Ngu Fan slowly raised his finger and spoke softly, not only did he know, he probably knew better than him. Speaking of this, he was completely shocked. Then he grabbed his collar and shouted, so why didn't you tell me sooner, leaving me in such a difficult situation? Van Ngu Fan hastily spoke up to make peace, be gentle, be gentle, this small body of mine, I can't stand your punch. He exhaled trying to stay calm, why do I feel like you are the most powerful person in this world, everything cannot escape your five elements mountain. Van Ngu Fan shook his hand and said, it's not what you think. The real advantage is you, I only made a choice, everything else is your life, your feelings, your steadfast ideals that have achieved this result. He wondered again, so why don't you choose to unify the world, with your talent, maybe this world will become better. Then Ngu Fan slowly picked up the wine bottle and poured it into a cup, slowly saying, because, in that ending, regardless of personality, there is no such thing as a beautiful thing, today we make wine and eat hot pot, discussing life, but he pushes the wine cup towards me. He caught the cup of wine, the two of them raised their cups and toasted together. The pot of hot pot is boiling hot. He looked at Van Ngu Fan and continued, if you already know everything, then what should I do next, you must tell me clearly. Van Ngu Fan sighed and shook his head and said, If I could calculate everything from past to present, I'm afraid my head would explode into smoke, my math power only stops here. He didn't give up and excitedly asked again, even if he couldn't figure it out, relying on his intelligence, he could come up with a good idea to help me. Ngu Fan raised his hand and rubbed his head and face, smilingly answering, I'm just like you, I still live alone and haven't loved anyone yet, let alone had children. He sighed helplessly. Van Ngu Fan saw his brother like that and felt a bit thoughtful. Van Ngu Fan immediately came closer, put his shoulder on his shoulder, and said, In the past, every dangerous war we encountered, what should we do? Van Fan immediately responded fiercely, of course facing difficulties and persistently attacking to overcome difficulties. Van Ngu Fan added, It would not be wrong to consider his current situation as a dangerous match. Van Fan said in surprise, Considering it a match, but this is different. Van Ngu Fan sat down with his legs crossed and said calmly, there's nothing else, our saint is afraid of something, just rush forward wherever he goes. Hearing that, he thoughtfully picked up the cup of tea in front of him and brought it to his mouth to drink, looking at his face reflected in the clear cup of tea, he thought to himself, is there a way to go? Don't let Van Fan say more, Van Ngu Fan enjoys teasing his brother, he said, to be honest, you make people admire you. Tian Fin Tuit, De King Can, Ho Tu Yin Tu Yin, several independent beauties with absolute beauty. Having a child with you, wouldn't life start to become very interesting? Van Ngu Fan's house is located behind the towering mountains. As he was preparing to leave, he turned around and waved goodbye to his brother. Van Ngu Fan looked at Van Fan leaving with a gentle smile and said, Prepare yourself mentally so you can calmly face more surprises, come on my good brother. Van Fan rushes back as fast as light. On the way back, he thought to himself, what has happened, then calmly accept that the deity passed by on the bloody and stormy road, is he still afraid of this kind of thing? Passing by a large clear river with charming scenery, stopping to meditate. After a while, his mind was calmer, Avin Fan slowly opened his eyes and said, it's true that Tui Tian Van and Gu Fan is calmed down this time. So just like before, if we face such a battle, what should we do next? As he spoke, he put his hand on his chin and caressed it, thinking, what to do? After thinking for a while, Van Fan's eyes suddenly awakened with meaning, illusion, yes, illustration, this is the source of all disasters. First, destroying this harmful thing to avoid a tragedy from happening again is the most important task. He thought about the fantasy of himself and his children, then discussed with Tian Fin to it to solve the difficulty of having children. Next, discuss your daughter's education and future with her and take the time to visit Tuyin Tuyin Lake. 
Van Fon laughed loudly and said, It is true that he is truly a deity. At this moment, at the top of the holy city, he was sitting and resting on his favorite chair when suddenly a call came from his senior brother. The junior brother of Van Fon continued to speak, Why did you call me here? Van Fon replied tiredly, Because of the secret. The other brother asked back in surprise, secretly. At this moment, his younger brother was very excited and he said, Speak quickly, I like the secret auditorium the most. Lam Fon looked at his junior brother and said that he would activate the earth hearing to control the origin of the world's number one erectile dysfunction drug. The junior brother said in surprise, paralyzed. He stood still for a long moment, then bent down, put his hand over his mouth, smiled cunningly and whispered to him, Senior brother, since when did you become interested in this kind of thing? It's not like you wanted to. Hearing that, he couldn't control his emotions and hit his junior brother on the head and said, Senior brother also dares to make fun of his itchy skin. The junior brother held his head in pain and cried out in pain, he had a terrible headache. His head was now swollen, with two lines of tears streaming down his face, saying sorry to his senior brother. He continued, looking up the origin of impotence, telling me that such harmful things need to be sealed. The junior brother turned back to look at him, scratched his head and stammered and said, Senior brother's output of impotence flirting with hard hearing always has a grasp but. He calmly asked, but what? The other junior brother rubbed his head shyly and replied, I'm afraid you will be embarrassed. He said with a serious face, this is the destiny of the world, this thing does not need to exist otherwise I don't know how many innocent people will be harmed. The junior brother approached Van Fon, he leaned close to Van Fon's ear and said, this thing was found from Deep Family, he did not understand and asked again, which Deep Family is Deep Family? That junior brother went forward and explained to Du Van Fon, is there any other Deep Family, that old acquaintance of yours, that life-saving benefactor who has not yet accepted to raise him, the Deep Family has Deep Tian Vu who is called Deep Tian Vu, he is the world's first merchant detective and controls the world's first merchant guild. He thought of the appearance of a woman, secretly thinking Deep Tian Vu. He immediately stood up angrily, clenched his fists and said loudly, there was no way her personality could do this. The younger brother waved his hand and closed his eyes to show his disapproval, continuing that the love of the local auditorium was absolutely correct, it was confirmed. At this moment, he was stunned in his chair, speechless, the junior brother looked at him and said, so, how do you want to handle this? At this time, his face was dark and he held his head in contemplation and said, Go down, I'll make arrangements. As soon as he finished speaking, the junior brother immediately said goodbye to his senior brother and then happily left, leaving him sitting there thinking. He thought to himself, Deep Tin Vu, the number one merchant in the world, is my great benefactor, tire of. It seems that I still have to personally go on a personal trip to Kim Lang to return to work in private with my relationship and it would be best for her to quietly resolve this matter. After finishing speaking, he flew up and went back to Kim Lang Tan. At the Jijou Si Hai Jin Ling Cheng Commercial Center, the current landscape is filled with skyscrapers being built. Deep Jia building is taller and more luxurious than the neighboring buildings. At this time, Lam Fan had approached the Deep Jia headquarters building. He stood outside observing the building for a long time. Lam Fan used the world of heaven and earth through the peak of heaven and man to observe the structure of the surrounding building of the Deep Family Headquarters. He secretly thought that the building had six layers of semicircular barrier, the building was divided into five in total, each floor had great light from small to large. Below there is a six elite great formation, and inside the building there are five super level stars, looking at the light emitted, they are probably at the level of the top 20 masters in the world. Maintaining these enchantments requires materials, even if they cost thousands of gold, no more than 20 great masters, each of them spending thousands of gold to earn, worthy of being the best in the world in the deep clan. He put his hand to his chin in thought, Deep Tin Vu, this guy is hard and soft, and is not allowed to go on this trip for his own personal purpose. If I used my official status as an official to come here and make an intervention that was too extensive on the ground and not suitable for spreading, I would certainly be laughed at. I owe her a big favor and I can't use violence to let someone like me and Dai Min Kwok treat that La Dac Su La Sat. It's still better to go in quietly and handle it humbly, she can't help but give me some dignity. Van Fon sighed as he spoke and decided to go inside. Van Fon went down and carefully observed the situation at the front entrance of the building. Looking at the tall skyscrapers with bustling people passing by. At the main door, there are three tall security guards standing outside, checking each person entering and exiting the building. Each person who wants to enter the building needs to line up for the security check. 
This time it was a woman's turn and she slowly approached the guard. Van Fon observed attentively, observing every detail. The other girl gave a card to the security guard. Looking at the card, he thought to himself, is that an employee card? The other guard used the card and used modern technology to scan her face and card and said, pass. Van Fon thought to himself, this is the newest identity verification technique, through eyesight, testing genetic information. Even the most advanced translation technique can only change the appearance of bones, but it absolutely cannot copy the genetic information of the target you want. Van Fon smirked and continued thinking, it is almost a perfect identification system, but all over the world the number of people who cannot blend in can be counted on the fingers of one hand, the deity is also one of those fingers. He clenched his fists and thought to himself, that year when he sneaked in to explore, he did quite a bit and made me miss my job a bit, ha ha ha. At this moment, a beautiful woman was walking towards Lam Fawn and saw that she was wearing a card similar to the other girl's card earlier. The girl confidently strode towards the building, passing by the alley where Van Fawn was standing. When he saw that, his eyes lit up, in just the blink of an eye, the girl had disappeared from the street. Van Fawn knocked the girl unconscious, he picked her up and went into a dark corner to say, offended, and used her identity for a bit. After finishing speaking, he placed the girl against the corner of the wall and reached down to take the card from her body. He placed a finger on her forehead and then used the super body transformation method to target sentient beings on the girl. The method on sentient beings copies all of the target's genetic information, a goal that can only be achieved by a high-level super secret technique. The black cat behind him looked at the scene before him in bewilderment. A moment later he became a perfect copy of the girl. He stood up and withdrew his hand from the girl's forehead. Feeling something was wrong, he looked down at his body and thought. This body has some endocrine imbalance and a damaged stomach. As he finished speaking, he used his magic power, he healed the girl and thought to himself, let me help you cure this small disease completely as repayment. Okay, then, Van Fon used the magic to hide the girl he said, the hidden body magic enchantment magic, please return to the body secret method. Bright yellow light emitted around the two of them. Then gradually became a giant yellow circle surrounding the girl. He was satisfied and thought that with that, her safety would no longer be a problem. Go back to those skyscrapers. Van Fon was now lined up in a crowd. He turned closely to the entrance and exit of the people in front. Please show your identification card, the security guard said, looking at Van Fon. He calmly smiled gently and handed the card to the security guard. He used the supernatural eye and also the naked nucleus to check the girl's genetic code. He scanned the entire body's genetic code, then scanned the face very carefully. A moment later, the security guard gave the card to Van Fon and said, Please check in. Van Fon gently walked inside and said, Thank you. He happily thought to himself that the first hardship had been successfully overcome. Going inside, looking at the luxurious modern space, he was confused and didn't know which direction to go. Seeing a Zen master guard sitting next to the elevator, Van Fon found him very familiar. He burst out laughing in surprise, Van Fon then covered his mouth with his hand and turned away, thinking to himself, isn't this a traitor to Buddhism? Practicing the golden body arhat method but being unable to control one's sexuality is hated by people, clearly he is just a simple stupid monk. Harmonizing the contemplation and becoming a condensation of the Golden King, immovable Dharma form, practicing in the world, all Dharmas are non-invasive and all forces are unbreakable. Even the deity can only subdue him but cannot destroy him, in the end, he had to become good brothers. I said, why haven't I seen him in this time, but he's still here watching the door, what tricks did Deep Tin Vu use? He gently walked over and put his hand up to cover his mouth and coughed softly, ahem. Looking at this simple monk, he thought to himself, this stupid guy can probably easily get through. Van Fon moved to line up behind the two men and prepare to enter the elevator. The elevator had now reached its destination and dinged an announcement. Van Fon always silently observed the monk's movements. When she was about to step in, an arm suddenly reached out and tripped her. He was a little scared, his face turned red and he thought, oh my god, what's going on? The monk stood up and stared at him, making him even more scared, thinking to himself, could it be that there was a problem somewhere? The monk looked at him sadly and said, why didn't you come to the hotel yesterday, I waited for you all night, what did you do? At this moment, tears were flowing from the monk's nose, he said, they have prepared a real date for her. 
He tried to stay calm and smile gently, but his face was already sweating. Ban Fan thought to himself, it's too much of a coincidence that they have one leg. This body is aimed directly at the taste of everyone, combined with his cuteness, in turn becomes love in the hearts of girls. The monk held his hand, Van Fon tried to stay calm, not understanding what was going on. That stupid monk pouted shyly and approached him, wanting to kiss him, then said, You're worried about how to repay the sincere love you've cruelly given me. At this moment, he could not keep calm and raised his hand to press the monk's head and said, God lead me. The monk wrapped his arms around Van Fon's waist and hugged her tightly to him, continuing to coyly continue, If you don't tell me the reason, I won't let you go, even if your throat is dry, I won't let you go. He thought in horror, luckily we know how to deal with this guy, otherwise it would be really troublesome. He raised his hand and slapped the monk in the face, thinking to himself, after slapping him hard, he threw the problem to him. The monk was slapped painfully, not giving the monk time to react, Van Fon pressed his hand against his head and continued, why do you have to wait for my answer, you don't know what to think. The monk was bewildered, not understanding what he had done wrong. He immediately knelt down and said, I'm so sorry, I was wrong and I'll think hard about it. Van Fon immediately responded angrily, if you don't think clearly, don't come to me, I have to work. After saying that, she left, leaving the stupid monk crying bitterly. The monk heard the sound of the elevator opening as he watched the figure of the girl he liked leave. Two lines of tears flowed continuously until the elevator door closed. Only then did he inside breathe a sigh of relief and say, it's really dangerous. The elevator reached the 11th floor and soon reached the 20th floor. The elevator door opened and he stepped out. He looked around, he thought to himself, every 20 floors, the elevator will change every 20 floors to prevent people from sneaking in all the way to the top floor, thinking carefully is truly the deep family style. Who will be the doorkeeper on this floor, he wondered, at the elevator, there was an old man with white hair and beard, he closed his eyes tightly and calmly sat on a chair, stroking his beard. Feeling someone coming, his eyes immediately opened to look at him. He felt a little scared in his heart and thought, the holy math candidate is doomed. This person, with his extraordinary talent, can't be forgotten that he was originally the number one strategist of the Eastern family, only inferior to Van and Gufan's divine magic. After the failure of the Eastern family, this guy was also jobless, but unexpectedly he also stayed, reside here. NGO candidate looked at him with suspicious eyes. Then he raised his hand and waved him over. He pointed his finger at his face in fear, the old man immediately nodded. He tried to stay calm and walked towards the old man. Looking at the new girl he asked, who are you? Van Fon remembered the girl's name on Chow Man Hu's admission card and immediately replied, Chow Man Hu. The old man closed his eyes and continued, I ask about your true identity. He raised his hand to cover his mouth and laughed softly, Mr. NGO, what are you kidding, I'm just an employee. The old man's face remained expressionless as he continued, upstairs from the chief general manager down there were janitors, a total of 2,316 people, each person's name, surname, gender, position, public duties, I remember the fixed things every day very clearly. He closed his eyes and waved his hand, then added, Chow Man Hu is a new office employee of the 5th Floor Finance Department, serving for 187 days. Today's job duties have nothing to do with the industrial park, service on the 20th floor and above. Even though he was extremely worried in his heart, he still calmly said, Ah, my superior suddenly announced this morning. The old man raised his hand to stroke his chin, looked at the girl suspiciously and asked, What is the name of her superior? He stammered and said, ah, the name is. Confused, he raised his hand and scratched his head, smiling wryly, thinking, what should I do, what should I do, how can I lie in front of this cunning old man? Yes, he suddenly realized something. He clasped his hands, you perform the cosmic universe to transform and arise, the cosmic universe is determined. Nakong Sinch's eyes opened wide, his glowing body hovered slightly in the air. The space around the two people seemed to change. Nakong Sinch turned his head to look left and right, nearby staff did not move. In the distance also stood still and did not move. He thought, this magic can arbitrarily manipulate the flow of time around, a unique and holy technique. Ngo Ong Sinch poor god, holy venerable, is indeed a human being. He let out a breath, exactly, that's right, it's me. Nakong Sinch stood up from his chair and bowed respectfully, the saint dressed like that came secretly, did not take the main road, and did not have any impulses. 
I'm looking for the head of the deep family to have important personal matters to discuss, right? I'm comfortable, talking to smart people like you is still my favorite, so could you conveniently give me some information? NGO Ong Sinch is considerate and convenient, now I work for the Deep Family and need a place to rest, the matter between the sane and the head of the Deep Family and personal matters can further strengthen this relationship, it's only natural to push the boat in the water and make love to people. I'm sorry, old fox, no wonder I'm living well here, I'm sure you're a genius, isn't this a loss of talent here? NGO Ong Sinch is humble, the world will settle down, there is no need for anything that causes darkness, makes distinctions like me, needs construction talent, the old man is unemployed, has offended too many people, wanting to find a safe place is already very difficult, it's difficult, I hope the saint will understand. He nodded, understood, understood, then can we go up? Nak Ong Sinch raised a finger, the old man's fate was no problem, it was just. There are three people up there, the remaining two people should have no problem, the old man taught how to deal with it, it's just that there is one person who knows the saint, and can only rely on him. He reached out his hand, thanking me, this time for help, next time I have a chance I will return the favor. NGO Ong Sinch reached out to grab it, the saint did not need to be polite, hoping the saint would help, he replied, nothing. The two of them seemed to have reached some kind of agreement, smiling at the same time, he, he, he. The elevator moves to the 80th floor. He came out from inside. He carefully looked around and observed the situation. The doorman stood alone in the middle of the lobby. Next to that person was a sword. He felt restless. This figure was too familiar. He had a bad feeling. The other person spoke up. The saint is invincible in the world, if he has come here. He turned around. Why did he have to sneak up and sneak over? He smiled bitterly, God, the number one sword, sword si vu van style. He pretended to be naive, this big man, you've got the wrong person, I, I'm just a corporation employee reporting to work. The two were silent for a moment, vu van Phan spoke up, the outside can change, the inside can change, the only God will not change, the saint is the goal I pursue in this life, my temperament is clearly shown in every move, how can you accept it? I'm embarrassed, eh? He walked over and looked around, there was no one else here. Vu Van Phan replied, from here, there is no one else, the Saint Venerable can rest assured. Hearing that, he immediately relaxed, his body lit up. Your original appearance is back, you sword lover immersed in the extreme realm of swordsmanship, why are you here guarding the door like that, what did they use to subdue you? Vu Van Phan's sincerity is to ask for an opportunity to have a good reputation and seek swords with the Saint. I'm surprised, what, you can't find me to practice swords, why did you choose to come here? Vu Van Phan replied, from the time of the final decisive battle to the time of the initial settlement, there was very little that could make me have the heart to cheat, someone told me, come here and wait for you, the opportunity will come by itself. He scratched his head, that was Van and Gu Phan's idea, right. Vu Van Phan placed his sword across his body, I was already unknown among people, the Holy Venerable had opened up a higher realm than ever before, it wouldn't be too much to call him an immortal king. That makes me so infatuated, he smiled bitterly, if ordinary people heard these words, it would make me very uncomfortable. Vu Van Phan grabbed the sword, hoping the Holy Venerable would receive one of my swords. The male lead looked at him intently, after a while he slowly said, come. The atmosphere between the two immediately felt like it was on fire. The sword cultivator aura of the martial arts style exudes. The right arm pulls out the blade, the supreme swordsmanship, go find rules. The sharp light carrying the cold aura of the sword stabbed forward. His hair moved with the wind. Worthy of being the number one swordsmanship, this is already the ultimate swordsmanship, just pulling out the real sword without any fancy stabbing at the opponent, in a moment of flowing water, accomplishing everything changed into a normal person, before I could react, I was already dead, but for me, being able to freely control the flow of time around me was still no threat. This deity also hopes that in the future you can overcome obstacles and reach the same level as your opponent, although I don't know how long it will take, consider this trick to help you become enlightened. He used his finger to touch the tip of the sword, even with one finger supporting this unsurpassed destiny. Followed by a snap of the fingers, the blade passed by his side. Vu Van Phan stopped with the force of the stab, his sword net shattered into many pieces. Vu Van Phan's eyes appeared in disbelief and shock. He slightly tilted his head and looked back, he asked, how is it? Vu Van Phan placed his hand on his chest, thanking the saint for giving me the opportunity. The male lead pointed up, can we go up yet? 
Vu Van Phan didn't stop him, family leader Deep had been waiting for a long time. He was startled when he heard that, what, does she already know, Vu Van Phan replied, that's right. The male protagonist scratched his head and shouted, what have I been doing for the past half day, Vu Van Phan reminded, holy venerable, your moral heart is in chaos. On the top floor of the CEO's office. Family owner Deep sat on the chair, looking like he had been waiting for a long time. He pushed the door open and walked in, haven't seen him for a long time, what a big battle. Even in this room, many such hidden formations were arranged. Once the eldest daughter of the Deep family was skilled in calculations, and now she is also the manager of the world's number one clan. The other person was silent for a moment without speaking. After a long time, he said, the saint recognized the wrong person, the person sitting in the chair turned around. Is a red-haired man wearing a mask that covers his face. He frowned, the other person's fingers tapped on the desk. Phantom images gradually appeared around him, the shape of reception tables and chairs appears, after a while, the illusory image also gathered into reality, the red-haired man stood up from his chair, Sir, please sit down. He unceremoniously sat down, he asked, Who are you, where is Deep Teen Vu? The young man replied, She is my mother. I'm surprised, you are the new manager of the Deep family, rarely seen, son of Deep Teen Vu. The young man did not answer this question but asked, This time the Holy Venerable came here in person, is there anything that needs my Yi family's secret cooperation? He pondered, You seem to know the purpose of my trip this time. The young man walked to the window, the wards outside are just a trap, there are detectives from the Tian Yan sect in all four directions and ten thousand directions, as soon as the Holy Venerable came here, I knew it. He half seriously and half jokingly asked, what if I came to ask about the crime? The young man replied, if the Holy Venerable wanted to come to question the crime, the barrier outside could not prevent it, so I secretly probed, from the moment the Holy Venerable started going upstairs, it was impossible for the Holy Venerable to understand the old man's purpose, are all used to probe the saints. If the Holy Venerable had come with malicious intent, I would have been thousands of miles away by now, and no one would have seen me. He smiled bitterly, as expected, like mother, like child, her mind is also very cunning. The red hair sat down opposite the male lead. He poured tea, this is the highest compliment for a businessman, if you come here this time, please say it directly. You comfortably enjoy a cup of hot tea, I have heard it before, the new generation of the Deep family, although young, his thoughts are unpredictable, his methods are not much inferior to Deep Teen Vu. The humble young man, the highly praised noble man, are all the results of his mother's teachings. He smiled, that year my relationship with your mother was not bad, she had the grace to save my life, at that time we didn't have you yet, I didn't expect that after so many years, her child would grow up so much. The young man raised his hand to block the male lead's words, if you want to talk about the past, you can make an appointment for another time, my arrangement is in minutes, he repeated, minutes. The young man tapped on the table, a map of the area appears. Red dots fly up, the lines of text appeared, 1. Signed a comprehensive contract to purchase the stock rights of the Tu Kong family, 2. Negotiated the mineral exploitation rights, 3. The project of relocating the merchant into a magic weapon at the aging Zhou stage, 3. The ceremony of purchasing 45% of joint stock rights. After that, a long series of items flashed past his eyes. He was a bit surprised, the magical medicine and narrative magic, the highest secret magic of the nine continents, was used to spread commercial information, in this world, people with the financial and human resources to organize this formation could be counted on the fingers of one hand. He silently assessed, he was so busy at such a young age, remember when I was his age, still a kid struggling to survive in the rivers and lakes, this kid's future was limitless, Deep Teen Vu was truly alive, a good son. After the secret method runs out, it will automatically disappear. Millennium said, the business field is like a battlefield, as long as efficiency can be improved, let me tell you, it's just a series of numbers, sooner or later it can be found, so the holy venerable just gets straight to the point. He took a sip of tea, young people are patient and not in a hurry. He opened his mouth, okay, relax, I hope your deep family immediately stop making and spreading the world's number one erectile dysfunction elixir. The young man crossed his arms in front of his chest, it was impossible. He slammed his hand down on the table, you rotten boy, refuse so decisively, you don't consider your deity as a grain of sand anymore.
The young man was gentle and did not dare, if the saint wanted to forbid it, all he had to do was issue a holy order, who in the divine continent would not dare to obey, why would he sneak in like now, wasting time on both sides? He remembered the images he had experienced, this thing caused deep harm to the world, creating more tragedies in this world, my deity came here to make this request, can you bear to be cruel? The red hair replied, I am the new head of the deep family, if everyone comes casually, ask me casually, wants me to stop the business, wouldn't the deep family soon go bankrupt, and deep Duong praises this it's just a very small circulation area, I don't know why the saint keeps wanting to stop. He frowned, this erectile dysfunction disorder disrupts people's minds, harms innocent people, and should not exist in this world. The red hair asked, even if there is no erectile dysfunction, the people in this world can only have as much of the magical medicine as they want, can the saints find it all? The red hair continued, the deep family circulates erectile dysfunction in a small area, the meaning behind it is very important, the connection is very wide, how can one say stop because of one of your words? There was fire and insolence in his eyes. The aura around his body exploded, the light cuts vertically across the young man's mask. In a moment, the two halves of the mask separated and fell off his face. Young and defeated face, he was stunned. I'm skeptical, why do you look a little familiar? The teenager rubbed the bridge of his nose, another mask appeared on his face. The red hair stood up straight. The Holy Venerable has already opened his mouth, not to mention this small impotence practitioner, even if we want my deep family to disband on the spot, with just one sentence from the Holy Venerable, how can my deep family dare to say half a word, this summer, no one dares to say no. I just don't know if it's like what the saint once said when unifying the divine pearl, this world is the world of the people of the world, in fact this world is still the world of the saint alone. These words choked his throat. The air was filled with the tense smell of gunpowder, he let out a breath. You seem to already know the answer, good boy, take my words to silence me, at this time, if I force you to do as you do, if rumors get out, say I have disbelieved with the world, people will not be easy, manage any more. The red hair is not polite, that's right, your holiness, if you have nothing else to do, please go home. He slightly curled the corners of his mouth, a young man is a young man, although I don't know why you refuse to sell me this favor, but if you think the deity is so easily handled by others, then you too underestimate the deity, let you know, the deity can unify the divine continent, it is not enough to rely on my ability alone. The red hair asked, what do you want, he leaned back in his chair. The first decision of the world is to rule the country to protect the people, to protect the people, one must have property, the deep family is the number one merchant, this deity came to ask for advice for a few days, for the first decision of the world, the head of the deep family will not refuse the deity, respectful. He curled his mouth and thought, kid, if my deity follows you every day, you sell erectile dysfunction once, then I will break you once, see how long you can endure. When the red hair heard that, she panicked, the saint, the saint, was busy every day, the world was filled with waste, one person divided into several people was not enough to spend, work, there was no time to stay with me forever. But right after that the guy was startled, well, the original saint venerable has now become two people, how many people did you say? Young man with a choking throat, person, a version of him standing behind the young man, how do you think the deity is in such awe-inspiring glory, overwhelming the masses? Another guy appears, if I can't use good words to make a request, then I can only change one method. Five brothers surrounded the young man, this guy was forced to sit down in a chair by a clone. His spine was straight, hands placed on the table clenched tightly. His whole body trembled. He said, this magical statue is a bit of a waste of energy and cannot be used for a long time, but maintaining it for seven or eight months is no problem. My child, do you know the benefits of my saint? A ring of light suddenly appeared, it expanded in the space above their heads. A woman sitting on a chair slowly lowered down from inside. That person lowered his sharp eyes and looked down, he was stunned. The clone standing next to him disappeared, the remaining ones were also withdrawn simultaneously. The other woman landed after a second, the young man stood up and bowed his head, mother. The woman patted the young man's shoulder, retreated, changed me, the young man replied, yes. He watched the back of the guy leaving. The woman lifted one side of her bangs, the saint had indeed been gone for a long time. As soon as I arrived, my son lowered his prestige, his prestige was no less than in the past. He scratched his head and said hello, long time no see you, listener. He thought, after so many years, this woman still made me feel itchy and scared. 
Deep Teen Vu stared at him. She asked, why is the saint so stubborn about impotence? He replied, just because of me, I have a friend who is suffering from impotence, and many other gangsters are also suffering from the same thing. If it weren't for the Deep family, I would definitely close the door for him. Deep Teen Vu asked if the saint knew the real name of this Lu Duong canopy. He replied, I don't know. Erectile dysfunction is a type of miracle medicine, there is another name called giving to Tu Guan Yin, he repeats, giving to Tu Guan Am. He remembered the words that Tian Fan Tu it said as well as the image of the mother and child, the two of them struggling, an unbelievable thought appeared in his mind, oh my god, really. Deep Teen Vu continued, this is a miracle medicine to treat infertile women, and has helped countless people who cannot conceive realize their dream for the next half of their lives. She turned her head to look at the male lead, the guy above his head appeared asking questions. Deep Teen Vu admitted, including me. He opened his mouth in surprise, huh, you? Deep Teen Vu looked down at her belly, that's right, I'm 28 years old and the heavenly power will never come. At home, I asked famous doctors everywhere and diagnosed me that I could not have children, and that in this life I would be lonely until old age, without children. Finally, I found King Valley and prayed for this remedy. He frowned, Medicine King Valley, Medicine King Valley sacrificed to save people, how could he honestly pick up this kind of harmful thing? Deep Teen Vu asked, Oh, how come Tan Tong is also familiar with Lean Tam, she is very afraid of that stranger, wholeheartedly researching immortal medical techniques. He shyly turned his head to look the other way, that was six years ago. He sighed, Now I ask you, stop making excuses. The expression on Deep Teen Vu's face was filled with unhappiness. She turned around and left the male leads back, huh? The two people did not speak for a moment, he waited for her to speak. Deep Teen Vu said after a while, the magical medicinal properties of the gift of death, the daughter who eats the yin relaxes her body, prays for the world to be created, can be reborn on earth, within three days she will be able to conceive a secret. But also because the medicinal properties are too strong, the whole body is hot, love is born, and people have other thoughts that bring harm to others. Isn't this about avoiding medicine and the physician himself? He asked, if she knew so well, why was she still spreading erectile dysfunction on the auction block? Deep Teen Vu sighed, this is all to protect the heart, and also to keep the magic medicine that can save thousands of women. Not long after he left the Deep family, people appeared on the river with other intentions, abusing this medicine as a drug to harm people, and then became more and more evil. I tried my best to prevent it, but still couldn't prevent it, even looking for infertile people to ask for medicine. Beautiful scenery looking out the window, so, I had a plan. The Deep family stopped selling the medicine Tang Tu Quanin, changed it to the name Nihi Naguya Chuen Fan, and at the same time conducted quarantine treatment for the patient to stop the spread of this medicine. After which the name of impotence canopy in the night market continued to be sold in small quantities. For a long time, the wanderers only knew the world's most magical erectile dysfunction medicine and forgot to give Tu Quan Yin, but this second moon spring wind continued to bring blessings to the patients. He rubbed his chin, changed the name of the medicine without changing the medicine, very similar to the behavior of a businessman like her. Deep Teen Vu said, this is the best way I can use, do you have any better ideas? He frowned, but, but spreading impotence like this is no less disastrous. Deep Teen Vu insisted, before there was no erectile dysfunction, there were still strange laughter and joys in the rivers and lakes, erectile dysfunction was the root of fire, causing disaster in the rivers and lakes, but this death Guanyin saved thousands of thirsty families, desperate to have children, small scope erectile dysfunction causes chaos, in exchange for saving thousands of sterile families, if you become a saint, what will you choose? Raise your hand, stop, stop, you want to manipulate my mind again. But if that friend of mine was greatly harmed by this erectile dysfunction, if she had tried to control the use of second moon spring wind. Can you please stop selling these things, it seems like I owe you my life, if you ask for anything, I will wholeheartedly repay it, Deep Teen Vu says one word, five. He obviously understood so he yelled, what what, you see this is a market, why are you still paying the price, I won't accept it, it's two at most. Deep Teen Vu said, only four lives. He insisted, no, I won't, there are still many left, maximum three lives, let's finish it. Deep Teen Vu reaches out, agrees, cooperates, he was stunned. He reached out to shake her hand, oh, why did I feel a little uneasy, how could she happily agree so easily? Deep Teen Vu generously revealed that because Lean Tam had researched a new medicine with no side effects, we had already planned to stop. 
he was dumbfounded, he patted his head, God, I understand, you and your mother teamed up to trap me, right? From the beginning, your son set a trap to spy on me, doing something against my will, wanting to make me angry, using it to make my intentions clear. Then you came out and discussed the conditions with me, from beginning to end, I was always in your trap. Deep Teen Vu stroked one side of her hair behind her ear. Since the cold and aloof person who sneaked away from my side disappeared into this world, I have indeed made a lot of progress, I can now figure out the businessmen's plots and questions, these are like knives stabbing into my chest. He countered, why sneak around, I just don't want to cause trouble for you guys. Deep Teen Vu doesn't listen, dogs and cats are kept for a year, both healing and feeding, no matter how much they want to take care of themselves, only cold and heartless people suddenly disappear, no carrying a longing without remembering anything. He scratched his head, oh no, didn't you say it properly just now, why did you suddenly bring up this matter, I, I was very reluctant, and said, I also appreciate your kindness of accepting me, miss, if we didn't do it, we wouldn't have the deep family today. Deep Teen Vu said sharply, so now I don't have to worry about being with others, if not, please return the favor to the saint. He exclaimed, oh, here, so fast, you, you must have planned it out, right, this cruel woman. Deep Teen Vu grabbed his collar, don't think I'm the type of person who has that idea, this is very urgent, just in time to satisfy the conditions so I can't delay. The male lead also shouted loudly, less threatening me, if there is anything that can make even the world's number one merchant in the world unable to do it. Deep Teen Vu gritted his teeth, the hand holding the male protagonist's shirt slowly loosened. She bowed her head slightly, even if it's me, there are times when I'm helpless, he stiffened. He asked, oh, what's wrong with you, you were arguing happily, why are you suddenly like that, how can we continue arguing? He sighed, in fact, you can't use business tricks to disguise yourself, even if it's not a transaction, we've known each other for so long, if there are any difficulties, I'm willing to help you as much as possible. Deep Team Vu's lips moved, she raised her head and looked up. Her beautiful eyes looked like she was about to cry, please save our son and daughter, I have no choice. The two words sun directly landed on his head. Next, the girl shined down on his back, our three words directly made you fall. His whole body turned to stone, then from the top of the head it cracks. Countless questions fly around him, who am I, where am I, where do I come from, where do I want to go? That's right, why do I think this baby looks familiar, so it's just like when I was young and handsome. He didn't know what to say for a moment. He shouted loudly, but when did we have children? Before I left, I respectfully treated her and never acted excessively towards her. The beautiful scenery turned around, who wants you to be polite to me, it's really bitter. He asked, what, what do you mean by that? Deep Teen Vu turned around to face him, everything is God's will, the monks Guan Yin mixes with wine, the effect of women using it is the same as I said before, men will use it once they use it. I'm nervous, what happens if a man uses it? 18 years ago, I finished preparing the medicinal wine and was about to drink it, but you suddenly interrupted me. 18 years ago, Deep Team Vu holds a package of medicine in her hand as a gift to Tu Quan Am. She opened it and poured it into the wine decanter, while preparing to drink, I discovered a sound outside. She quickly hid the medicine inside her shirt, what? At that time, when he arrived, there was a problem at the port, the old man told her to come and negotiate. Deep Team Vu can only leave what he is doing and stand up, we know. Before leaving, she nervously looked back at the wine bottle, she advised me to help keep an eye on me, I don't want anyone else to enter the room. The silent finger poked him, and more. An alcoholic like you must restrain yourself from secretly drinking alcohol on the table. The teenager responded and agreed. Returning to reality, he shouted loudly, I still remember the first part, but what happened after that? Deep Teen Vu continued, then, when I returned, I found you collapsed on the table, half of the wine consumed by you. The man's head was covered in sweat, next, what next? Deep Teen Vu gritted his teeth, next, of course I had to sadly drink the little remaining wine, the male lead was dumbfounded, so, so. So, the next day I looked back in bed and saw him lying next to me naked and fast asleep, so I, I did. After the girl deep woke up, she saw the teenager still unconscious lying next to her. Her face turned red, the girl's finger reached out. The teenager's cheeks were concave. Said young lady deep, sooner or later one day, you will leave me, this meathead. His face turned red, then, what have you done to my body? 
Deep Team Vu didn't dare look straight at him, so I put him back in front of the table, pretending that night hadn't happened yet, to avoid awkwardness for everyone. He asked, why do you think I'm a snail eater who refuses to empty the shells, living an irresponsible life? Deep Team Vu asked back, if he had known about this at that time, would he have stayed at the Deep family forever, by my side? He didn't understand why she felt I wouldn't do the same. Deep Team Vu temporarily couldn't make a sound, she smiled softly. Then turn around and leave, he will definitely do the same. But, the moment I found you on the road, I knew I didn't exist in your world. That year you lost all will and became addicted to alcohol, so I let you watch the door for me. That was the most money-losing business I've ever done, he said, she, I. Deep Team Vu's attitude changed, but this time I was able to claim back my three lovers from the position of the most invincible divine pearl in the world, finally allowing me to not only withdraw my capital but also make a profit. He was stunned, on Team Vu's beautiful face was a satisfied smile. The male lead suddenly laughed lightly, the two seemed to understand each other's thoughts. After a while he changed the subject, we should still talk about the children, what's wrong with them? Even though my son is a bit cold, I'm afraid there aren't many people in this world who can maintain such a calm demeanor towards me, he's just a bit too dominant, doesn't know how to restrain himself, and will offend a lot of people. It's not like you're having a hard time with it, are you? Deep Team Vu shook his head. From a businessman's perspective, it is truly excellent, so outstanding that it surpasses people of the same age, strategy and boldness in the market, even I am ashamed of it. He scratched his cheek, that's right, I was being played by him just now, but I'm still very happy for you, thank you for raising such an excellent son. Now, somehow, I'm a little happy. Beautiful scenery looking at him, she bowed her head slightly. Really, actually, it, it. It seemed like something was choking her, Deep Team Vu said softly, he is not our son. He opened his mouth, what, what is it? Deep Team Vu approached him, she whispered in my ear, there, that's our daughter. He stiffened, I'm so worried, really. The red hair seemed to hear his father's voice and suddenly turned his head. The whole room was filled with only red hair. Deep Teen Vu used her hand to tightly cover the male lead's mouth, she reminded, lowering her voice a bit, aren't you very mature? He grabbed her wrist, I was surprised, the three gates seemed to be broken at this moment, she said how could I calmly put a smile on my face? What is this all about, gloomy scenery? She walked towards the tea table, then slowly sit down. He sat opposite her, he urged, speak quickly. Deep Teen Vu was silent for a long time, she said that after giving birth to the two brothers, the Deep family's career later became weaker. My father is the head of the family, and he only has one daughter, me. During the years of war, there were many other business competitors on the outside looking in, while on the inside there were people plotting to divide the fortune. If I can't take over, the Deep family will disintegrate, so I spend almost all my time worrying about the family's career. During that time, Deep was impermanent outside looking for opportunities. When I go home, I constantly perfect the plan, and sometimes I'm so tired that I fall asleep on the table. He sympathized, she with her own strength resisted through that period of time, and even made the Deep family the number one merchant class in the world, the hardships in it, not enough for outsiders to know, I can unify the gods, Chow, also thanks to her help, is worthy of her reputation as a saint. She raised her eyes to look at him, even though I regret it now, I risked my life in the family's career like that, and neglected to take care of my children. He sighed, so, you became like this, Deep Team Vu shook his head. My brothers and sisters love me very much and are very understanding, but at a young age. She bit her lip, feeling helpless, having been kidnapped. His eyes darkened, what did she say? How could she be so heartless, the wooden barrier next to him was squeezed tightly by him. Deep Teen Vu's eyes widened slightly, the chair handle has cracks. Deep Teen Vu pushes his glasses, this chair is an object without mystical powers that 300 years ago, the leader of the martial arts sect was most fond of, and used the holy dragon seal before he died to leave behind the last, unique sculpture, that's strange, please pay me back quickly. He lifted his hand, A, hey, he smiled bitterly, this person's personality has not changed, from the moment he met her until now, his personality has not changed. Deep Tin Vu doesn't care, thank you for your compliment. He said, you've already tricked me once, now it's still a long way from seducing the deity, it's very difficult for me to seduce you. Light appeared in his palm, and the universe transformed. The space appears unstable within a small range. 
Just a moment later the chair handle was back intact. What, it's as perfect as before, isn't it? Deep Tin Vu stiffened and exhaled, if at that time. He wondered, at that time, what else? Deep Tin Vu shook her head, nothing. She returned to the story, this kidnapping happened very suddenly, also very strange, until now I still haven't found any clues. That day, I followed the Deep family's custom and checked the Deep family's business records in different places. The servant suddenly rushed in, the eldest lady, the eldest lady. Deep Teen Vu was still very calm at that time, she had been by my side for many years and had told me many times, don't panic if anything happens. The servant approached and whispered to her, the notebook in Deep Teen Vu's hand fell to the ground. Her body stiffened, her eyes looked terrifying, how could this be possible, the bodyguards were all selected to be very high class. The servant was in a hurry, such a thrilling story, the young master and the young lady, just, just like that, disappeared, leaving only a kidnapping letter. Her beautiful face was pale, she quickly ran out and quickly followed me home. The subordinates reported, I used all the family's intelligence resources, but could not find any clues, Deep Team Vu was angry, they were all trash. I guess, being able to capture them under the protection of so many experts is definitely not the norm, being able to invite such experts, even based on exclusions, cannot be determined, goal, right. Deep Teen Vu suppresses anger, the marketplace is like a battlefield, but not like a battlefield, both sides kill each other, it's just one death and one injury, or worse, both die, if the marketplace fights each other, losing is a whole family of several hundred people can become nothing in one night. Therefore, there are many enemies, everyone is full of tricks, careful and careful, leaving no trace behind, clues are almost impossible to find, not knowing where to start, everyone has them, possibility or anyone may not be. He asked, then how did she find her child? Deep Teen Vu shook his head, I tried everything but couldn't find it, but suddenly a month later. Deep Teen Vu moved around the room in confusion. The servant ran in, miss, miss, Deep Teen Vu opened his eyes, yes, there was breaking news. The servant propped himself up on his knees panting, the young master and young lady were back, they were back, they were, they were in front of the door, Deep Teen Vu asked, then why don't you come in to see me? The servant replied that the young master did not allow anyone to come close. Deep Teen Vu rushed out, she crossed the large yard. The small figure stood in the middle of the gate, is a baby carrying another baby on his back. Beautiful scenery and joy, she ran quickly. But then her calm eyes widened. Her two children were covered in wounds, their clothes were ragged and dirty, their skin was thin. Deep Teen Vu covered her mouth to stop her crying, but tears fell freely. The boy heard the noise, it raised its head. Opposite her was her mother's face filled with tears. The baby's eyes closed, it seemed relieved and staggered and fainted. Deep Teen Vu he held his son and daughter in his arms. He asked, so what happened after that, what happened to them? Deep Teen Vu stood up, she went to the window. After that kidnapping, their personalities changed completely, the boy, except for me and his sister, became cold and heartless towards everyone, without any mercy. But girls do, he listened attentively to her story. Deep Teen Vu wiped away the tears that were about to flow, if his brother was home, he would lock himself in his room. Three meals a day, shower and change clothes, never go out, only me and his brother can enter the room. Her finger pointed to the next room, if his brother was out working, he, he would become like that. Wearing a mask to become young master Deep T, it seemed like he was his older brother, helping me and his brother handle everything internally. He looked towards the other room, so why don't you look for me after such difficulties, Deep Teen Vu sighed. I always pay attention to his situation, although the children have never asked about their father, I know that they have a place in their hearts that cannot be changed, but they just never find the right opportunity. But at that time, he fought everywhere, was famous in the world, had many enemies, told you to recognize each other, wouldn't that have put you in more danger, that's why I didn't look for you. He stood up from his chair. He walked up to her, from the moment I met her, I always knew she was a very strong person. Deep Teen Vu doesn't understand what you want to say, he spoke softly, occasionally leaning on others, such as me. It's not like I've hurt my self-esteem, I've relied on the help of my brothers in life and death to be able to get where I am now, these words seemed to touch her heart, so, do you have any solution? He frowned, he needed to find a doctor when he was sick, let me listen to his heart and see. The middle of the male lead's forehead glowed, it connected his mind, the space became quiet, a gust of wind swept across the room. The male protagonist's consciousness spreads to every corner. 
It moved to the open door in the corner of the room. Someone is sitting inside, is your daughter. His consciousness penetrated her brain, nerves are stimulated. He penetrated into her sea of consciousness. Connecting the mind to the first level, you can feel what it thinks and desires. Inside is a dark area, he blinked to let the light in. The light area is expanding day by day, until your consciousness is completely connected. The little girl's thoughts appeared, her mother and the saint had been in there for so long, the outcome was unknown. The young girl sighed, this saint is truly extraordinary, his uncompromising aura, his majestic aura, and his unparalleled magic that I had never seen before, almost made my mind melt away, no, I'm not strong enough yet. When my big brother is not around, I can only rely on myself to protect my sister, I must be more, more, more trustworthy, what should I do, what should I do? His consciousness stared, he frowned, there was definitely a problem. The young girl seemed to sense something, she turned her head left and right, someone. He withdrew his magic, stopped, he returned to himself. Seeing him open his eyes, he quickly asked, how is it? He exhaled, completely independent, he saw himself as the older brother protecting his sister, trying to make himself more mature and stronger. Deep Teen Vu was gloomy, in the past he had also found someone who had a connection with his mind, tried to find out what was really in his heart, and then compared it with the medicine, but, but. As he said, he didn't want to pretend to be an older brother to avoid it, but actually saw himself as an older brother protecting his younger sister, even you can't help. He replied that only people with six senses, ears, eyes, nose, tongue, body and mind can understand the meaning at the first level, it's okay to use it to steal intelligence, but it's not okay to handle this kind of situation, then go down one more floor. Deep Teen Vu doesn't understand, go down one more floor. Going down one more level is when the mind begins to move, thousands of thoughts begin to be born, simply put, I can predict its thoughts, Buddhism calls it the Muna consciousness, the seventh consciousness, Confucianism, religion is called. When the mind arises, there are not many people who can connect the mind and reach understanding, but there are not many people who can reach the point where the idea arises. The male protagonist sits cross-legged and floats in mid-air. His hands were clasped together in a defensive stance, connecting the mind to the second level, contemplating the first. Golden light shot out from the middle of his seal. It crosses the hallway, entered the room where the girl was sitting. Then merged into her seal. The girl shivered slightly, she turned her head and looked left and right suspiciously. Deep in the sea of Miss Deep's consciousness, a yellow light appeared. You have come here, when the mind arises, snap your fingers and give birth to 400 thoughts, you can observe the cause of the mind arising. He floats between ideas. He saw his daughter's silhouette inside a bubble. Thoughtful look, I'm so weak, I want to be stronger, I want to be stronger, he switched to another idea. The girl held her head, brother, why haven't you come back yet, if it were you, you definitely wouldn't be like that, we have to be like him to be able to protect my little sister. Another thought was, ah, can I attract a saint? No, except for my mother and brother, no one is truly kind to my sister, I can't be weak. He looked around, too, it was all about protecting his sister. He tightened the hem of his shirt in front of his chest, damn it, it made the deity's heart tighten again, what exactly did this child go through? He noticed that there was a very different concept from the rest, without hesitation he approached. Inside is the image of a baby covered in injury sitting huddled in a dirty room, his legs chained and unable to move. His eyes were lost, the child weakly called, Brother, save me, save me, save me, I'm so scared, I'm so scared. He reached out his hand to touch it, countless surrounding thoughts were shocking. It restrains the male protagonist's actions. I have to protect my sister, I have to protect my sister, I have to protect my sister, obviously these ideas see him as a bad guy. He was pushed out by the girl's sense of resistance. His eyes opened wide, the scene is startling, yes, have you found anything? He replied, perhaps it's the child's inner strength calling for everyone to protect him, just now forming a personality, wanting to be able to protect him at any time. His fist clenched tightly, seriously, what happened to them? Deep Teen Vu bowed her head, I've been investigating for the past few years, but I still have no clue, my two children have never opened their mouths to tell us what happened. He sighed, too, that still doesn't work, I can only guess what the cause is. Silent tears flowed down my cheeks, I clearly knew my children were suffering like this, but I didn't dare show worry in front of them, I told myself that I must be strong and let them feel safe. 
I really regret it, why was I careless at that time, why didn't the enemy come at me at that time, why did he harm my children? Deep Teen Vu cried until she trembled, he was quiet, he placed a hand on her shoulder. Deep Teen Vu looked at him urgently, still, is there no way to save him? He replied, there is one more level of mind connection, one can know everything. His beautiful eyes were full of hope, so why don't you use it? He sighed, down further was the third floor, which was the Buddha's words from Malaihup, the text of consciousness, it's because of the text. He explained in detail about the Thin Vu technique, compared to the seventh floor where the idea originated, this place can reveal all the secrets, to navigate this scene without getting lost, one needs to find someone with a calm and peaceful mind, and this technique is extremely profound and mysterious, requiring someone with high determination to be able to enter. Although I may enter this scene, my relentless warrior spirit warns me that if I persist, I may harm the innocent maiden. Teen Vu stared at him in confusion and asked, What should I do? He revealed, In this world, besides me, there is only one other person who can enter this scene. Teen Vu slashed boldly across her, the one he wanted to mention was Big High Tam of Tin Ni Mountain. He startled and asked how she knew about her. Teen Vu sighed and said, Big High Tam, the sacred land of the Buddhist sect of Meditation Mountain, is a place shrouded in mystery, I have been investigating her for many years, but her actions are as elusive as a dragon's head without a tail, and I have yet to uncover any trace of her. With a mysterious smile, I have a way to find her. The situation is dire, he exclaimed, what say you, why did you not speak sooner? Thoughts swirled in his mind, difficult to handle, bringing back memories of a past love he dared not reminisce. He averted his gaze and replied with a cold stare, Teen Vu, no, there is nothing to it, why should I go looking for her? Suddenly, Teen Vu tightly grabbed my hand and hurriedly pulled me away, without hesitation, he led me to search for her. Our deep family has just completed the construction of the Van Lied and Handai system, with just a burning incense, we can travel to any corner of the divine continent. He hurriedly explained, but wait a moment. Teen Vu halted his steps and inquired, What other matters do you wish to discuss? As she looked at her hand tightly holding his hand, she blushed and quickly withdrew her hand. After that, he hesitantly touched his hair and asked, Could it be that you don't want to cure your daughter's illness soon? He let out a sigh of relief, of course he wanted to, but he waited for me to contact her first. Teen Vu looked at him suspiciously, wondering how to make contact. He clutched his head in confusion, there are some ways that I and she cannot speak, in general, she waits patiently. The teen Vu raised his eyebrows, what is called communication cannot be spoken, you all. He scratched his head, not daring to utter a word. He turned his back, clasped his hands in prayer, his mind focused on the spiritual energy. The sound waves I transmit attempt to connect with the sea spirit, Big Hai Tam, are you there, Big Hai Tam, the signal is quickly received and replied to, oh my, the Holy One has finally found me, hasn't he? Hesitatingly, I have a small matter to request of you, Big Hai Tam continued, I am currently at the palace of the Medicine King, the Holy Lord has summoned me. As the swift conversation came to an end, he glanced towards the thin mist, where she was at the pharmacy pavilion, let's go. The situation is getting dangerous, said Teen Vu, I do not wish to go any further, please, quickly invite our nine-foot holy master to come and escort us. The office warrior raised an eyebrow, wasn't it just now that you wanted to go together? Teen Vu turned his face away, if you are not a close acquaintance of the holy master, I am not at liberty to go. He exclaimed in surprise, Teen Vu, as he glided past him to the work table. She performed a series of small maneuvers to open the spatial gate. With a cold gesture, she extended her hand and said, Hurry, let's go, my lord. With a puzzled look on his face, I will quickly make my way back. With a decisive word, he swiftly stepped into the space gate. In the blink of an eye, he had reached the palace of the king. He was extremely surprised to see a long line of people waiting outside the clinic. He wondered to himself, after a long absence from the royal court, why it had become so bustling and lively. Suddenly, a fierce voice echoed from afar, run away, why don't you want to see our master for a medical examination? This voice belongs to the bald leader of a carriage carrying a wealthy man. The man in black among the crowd pointed his finger at the bald head and said sternly, hey you, how dare you cut in line, there's a line here, respect it. With a bald head and a twisted ear, he smirked and said, only your followers dare to talk about queuing up with our master. The crowd roared in protest, we stood in line for a long time, everyone followed the rules. 
The bald-headed man raised his eyebrows, his tone stern. Listen up, that's the rule for you folks. Do you know who our master is? Even if I kill someone, I won't take responsibility. Speak no more, he raised his arm, swinging it towards the crowd of commoners, shouting, Be gone from my sight. Witnessing the unjust scene, he muttered a secret technique, his cunning mind, immediately causing all things to stand still and lose consciousness. Before my eyes, everyone turned into stone, only I remained free to move. He approached the bald head, throwing a punch towards him to disrupt the unfinished technique of the bald man. He also did not forget to approach the wealthy old man's sedan chair to teach him a lesson. Next, he slowly stepped into the pharmacy lord's chamber. As he stepped inside, his magical seal was instantly dispelled. All were bewildered, not understanding what had just happened. The bald-headed man's arm was twisted backwards, causing excruciating pain that made him break out in a cold sweat. He shouted in confusion, My hand, my hand, what happened to my hand? The old man on the sedan chair frowned, his face full of complaints and anger, who dares to cause trouble here? Before he could understand what was happening, the group of people carrying the palanquin seemed to be under some kind of control, instinctively turning the palanquin around and walking in the opposite direction. The old man sat on the sedan chair, shouting in frustration, What are you all doing? We must chase after them, the old man said, the procession running faster as he spoke. All present were dumbfounded when witnessing this unprecedented event. Inside the pharmacy, Lean Tam was wholeheartedly treating the patients. Before Lean Tam stood a patient floating with a clean wound on his abdomen. Lean Tam dared not to be careless for a single moment, to the point where sweat was dripping down his face. Shortly after, a kidney of the patient was launched out. It fell gently into the tray without the need for any hand movement. The surgical tools were cleansed and disinfected by the power of qi, returning to their rightful place. Lean Tam felt exhausted as she wiped the sweat off her brow after the surgery. He spoke slowly, it had been a long time since we last met, when did this place become so lively again? Hearing the familiar voice of Lean Tam, she quickly turned around, cheerfully speaking, why did you come so fast? I come seeking the Big High Tam for a matter of importance, where is she, truthfully speaking? Lean Tam chuckled and winked, she was in the royal court, he set out to find her. He pointed towards the door of curiosity, the rules of the pharmacy king's cup are not often visited, not many people have been seen in a year, why is it so crowded now? Lean Tam proudly boasts of his own achievements, for he is a skilled doctor, if he can save more people every day, rules are meant to be broken, since meeting him, one understands this philosophy. He gently patted Lean Tam's head, encouraging her, it has been tough, but why do we have to line up in two rows outside? Lean Tam sighed and recounted, people usually underestimate the power of love, there will be someone who will use the name of love to confess to you, no matter how you reject, it will be futile. In order to improve the efficiency of consultations, they were told that if they wanted to confess their love, they were not allowed to join the team, they had to form another team, and only when they were free would they be rejected. You listen so confused, this, these people are truly stubborn. Lean Tam sneered, Humph, these people all emit the smell of animals, none of them are genuine, looking at the face of this person, one cannot understand what they rely on to say they like me. With a heroic demeanor, he said to Lean Tam, I will take care of this for you, you can continue your medical examination. Lean Tam joyfully embraced his hand, yes, yes, it truly helped me a great deal. He pointed his finger at Lean Tam, you there, ever since I met you, there has been no rules. Lean Tam playfully stuck out her tongue and teased back. He waved goodbye to her and said, Continue your examination, I must go. Outside, two rows of people stood in a long line, chatting and discussing animatedly. A group of flower-holding men caressed their shadows while patiently waiting for Lean Tam, suddenly their bodies stiffened. These fools have been under my spell, feel the urge to turn their backs and leave. They were puzzled and wondered what was going on, why their legs wouldn't obey them. Which spiritual force dares to challenge me, Lean Tam, do not worry, I will return. The entrance to the Medicine King's palace was shrouded in dense fog. As he walked, he pondered, the poisonous goblet was one of the five great secret locations of the Spirit Pearl, without someone to guide him, entering the goblet would mean getting lost inside, with only one way out, death, the mysterious and deadly path had yet to be traversed. Knowing the danger ahead, he still calmly strides into the unknown. As he traveled along the long road, a picturesque scene of cherry blossoms on the hills greeted his eyes, adding a touch of romantic poetry to his journey. 
Under the peach tree, Big High Tam sat with her eyes gazing into the distance. She spoke in a reverent tone, the hero has arrived. He felt a bit confused, silently thinking that in this world, she was the only person he dared not to confront. He slowly approached Big High Tam and sat down. He didn't know how to start a conversation with the woman in front of him. Seeing the expectant gaze of Big High Tam, he cleared his throat hesitantly. Big High Tam picked up a melon seed from the plate, holding it up in front of him under the watchful gaze of Van Fawn. Then, gently dropped the melon seed to the ground. In the blink of an eye, the melon seed sprouted and leaves began to grow. The sapling grew taller and taller, then bloomed and bore fruit in the blink of an eye. Big High Tam picked up a watermelon and placed it in front of the two people. She wielded her magic power as she sliced through the melon, it had been a long time since they last met. Why does the saint still bind me like this? How terrifying must I be for the saint to have the idea of not daring to face me like that? He chuckled silently, knowing that her cunning was unmatched, nothing could be hidden from her. Seeing him remain silent, Big High Tam continued, The saintly master has no debts with me, everything is my decision. At that moment, he finally spoke up and asked, If we are connected by fate, why can't I sense what you're thinking? Big High Tam handed me a piece of melon, but it was not what it seemed. I am but a humble wanderer, born of no clan or lineage, so I hold no allegiance and only speak what I feel, with no hidden agenda. Just like this, we meet again, our hearts filled with joy, the saint can also feel it naturally. He accepted the slice of melon, his cheeks involuntarily blushing, taking a bite to savor the flavor. He gasped in amazement, what is this, it's too delicious and too sweet. Big High Tam replied, this is the second child's name and the cup found a hidden mysterious place, seems to be 500 years ago, an artifact before the law was born, with the words of inheritance on the watermelon bone. He glanced left and right, asking, which little rascal, what kind of little rascal, is hiding in this cup waiting to jump out? Big High Tam pointed behind him instead of giving an answer. The voice of a child rang out, Father, why have you come so suddenly, I was so shocked that I spat out the piece of melon I was eating. As the melon seed was about to hit his face, he muttered Big High Tam. In haste, he used his cunning technique to freeze all things around him. All movements came to a halt at that moment. He gazed at the Big High Tam before turning to the child behind him, sweat pouring down his forehead involuntarily. The child bore a striking resemblance to him, with a face full of joy. As he looked at the kid calling him father, he still couldn't calm his mind. He shook his head to clear his mind. Stay calm, too sudden, without any preparation, but, but, our master has faced these shocks continuously, so, so used to it already. Stay calm, stay calm, no tears can be shed, no tears can be shed, he gazes towards Big High Tam. Next, he devised a plan to investigate the beginning and end of her journey. Big High Tam regained consciousness, bewildered and not understanding what was happening. She wielded the watermelon slice before releasing it from her grasp. Gazing at the floating watermelon slice, Big High Tam was intrigued, this must be the legendary secret technique of the revered master, truly a martial arts skill like no other before. He pointed at the kid behind him and asked, but what is the meaning of this? Big High Tam calmly replied, her name is Lean Cinch, our daughter. Hearing the sea master's confident assertion, sweat poured down his forehead, the mysterious cause now more intriguing than ever, I can accept it, no, but I want to know what this is all about. Looking at his expression, Big High Tam immediately guessed that I could also clearly feel that the saint has been constantly gathering his children these days, so I should adapt a little. First comes the sword, then comes the flower, why have I never told you before? He replied, I may not know you better than you know me, but only you know what I think while I do not know what you are thinking. As I recall seven years ago, the then Chao Van was in chaos, various factions were plotting with no shred of trust left, today we are allies, but tomorrow we may betray each other. By my side, brothers with the same ideals as me, good comrades who never stop fighting, until only I remain. The path ahead at night is like the eternal dragon, I am exhausted and weary. At that moment, he felt desperate beyond measure, tears welled up in his eyes, he lamented and blamed his fate, I'm done for, I'm done for, I'm completely done for. Thus, I have only, only, without saying a word, his body suddenly emitted a terrifying aura. His eyes ablaze with red fury, his primal instincts unleashed, he roared like a wild beast. Blood and tears have transformed him into a different man. 
I am determined to eliminate all those who cause chaos in the world, to kill every traitor and betrayer, to slay those who divide our land, and to rid the world of those with evil intentions. On that day, because I was possessed by the devil, I became the nine-step divine assassin, with a heart full of evil intentions, I killed endlessly, from the south to the north, from the east to the west, sparing no one. The more I kill, the more desperate I become, the deeper I sink into despair. Just then, Big High Tam appeared before him like a god. The dark spirit within me whispered, Beware of the deadly beauty of the Big High Tam sect, why have you come? Big High Tam, I said softly, I have come to see you. At that time, he had become a man of doubt about life, constantly asking questions, the monks meditated on the Dharma, set out to find the Buddha, what does the world have to do with her, do I need her to save me? Big Hai Tam stepped closer to him, her eyes narrowing as she questioned him, now the Tan Chao alliance has formed, all seeking to eliminate you, the enmity of the world is forged within you, this is the Tan Chao you seek to unite, isn't it? Ignoring the advice of the sea heart, he spoke loudly, you are not the one to kill, quickly leave. Big Hai Tam retorted, if I am not the one to kill, whether I go or not, what difference does it make? With a sword at his side and a fierce look in his eyes, he threatened her with death if she did not leave. Big High Tam is not only unafraid, but also boldly steps closer to him. He stood tall in front of the girl's actions, continuing to speak harshly, she did not back down, seemingly willing to risk her life and waste a lifetime of cultivation. Big High Tam replied, You think compassion can overcome evil, then I am willing to forsake Buddha for you. At that moment, his body was filled with chaotic demonic energy, he heard nothing but the sound of anger gnashing his teeth, speaking recklessly, I kill not for the world, but for revenge. Big Hai Tam said confidently, then come and kill me. Two figures unconsciously moved closer to each other, exchanging a sweet kiss. Thanks to that, the dark energy inside him also automatically dissipated. The dark aura within you is slowly dissipating. With a fierce glare, tears streamed down her face as her eyes returned to normal. After the kiss, he felt exhausted and dizzy, his body floating in a state of uncertainty. Returning to reality after reminiscing, he widened his eyes and hesitantly asked, Could it be that just one kiss is enough to have a child? Big High Tam the words suddenly came to mind, I had never spoken to you before. On that day, the evil aura in his body had dissipated completely, with no chance of survival unless treated. I have led you to this royal court, seek Lean Tam for assistance. He scratched his head, no wonder when he woke up, he found himself in the medicine furnace of Lean Tam. Curious, he asked further, so what did she do next to me? Big Hai Tam answered with full clarity, after going through countless life and death battles, we have become kindred spirits. Under the protection of Lean Tam, I once again used the highest technique of our sect with her, the ultimate reincarnation. Although the journey was treacherous, the result was that he successfully reached the peak of martial arts, mastering the three realms of the body. Understanding the core issue, he pondered for a moment. After a moment, he finally spoke, if you know that I am its father, why not lead it to me? Big High Tam shook his head, not because he didn't want to, but because he couldn't. The more he asked, the more curious he became, could it be that he was worried about the safety of his child? Big High Tam shook her head in denial, she could only live for one more year. Receiving the news, his eyes widened in disbelief, confirming once again that he only had one more year to live, huh? Big High Tam nodded, I had planned to wait another six months, if its condition did not improve, I would take it to see the world, and conveniently find you. He couldn't control his emotions as he slammed his hand down on the table, what is the meaning of this? Big High Tam explained, Lean He was born with a rare congenital disease that causes unstoppable bleeding once wounded, so I took her to the royal pharmacy to find Lean Tam for treatment, in the medical book, this disease is called the Eternal Bleeding Syndrome and there is currently no cure from menstruation to blood will flow until death. He slammed his hand down on the table once more, glancing over at his petite daughter. Gazing at her innocent face, he asked in a low voice, Big Hai Tam, but there was no response from Lean Tam. Big Hai Tam shook her head, we tried to rescue but to no avail, in the midst of it all was a deep and overwhelming pain, this child did not utter a single cry of pain. I know it fears my concern, as I speak, Big Hai Tam could not help but shed tears. Even I, a seasoned warrior, could not help but shed tears that rolled down my cheeks unnoticed. He bowed his head, clutching his head in frustration, it was truly the most annoying thing in the world, clearly she was crying again, causing even a man like me to feel sympathy. 
Big High Tam hesitated before asking. Suddenly Van Fon tightly grasped her hand and stood up abruptly. He said to High Tam, the divine healer of the western region, the wild north horse in the eastern sea, I will find them all, anyone who does not come to me, I will bring them to me by force. Summon the most skilled healers of the realm to diagnose it. If necessary I will search for any rare herbs, even if I have to climb the nine heavens and descend to the nine earths. Beware, the treacherous Big High Tam is near, let us capture her now. He immediately agreed, his mind racing as he tried to figure out a plan to solve the situation. The lean cinch technique can now be executed. The gentle girl gracefully ran towards the majestic castle to visit her father, the star of the martial arts world, whom she missed dearly. He knelt down with open arms, waiting for his daughter to arrive. He silently pondered on how to exhaust the opponent's vital energy without using brute force. Two figures embraced each other tightly after months of separation. The world around them seemed to turn into a warm and touching father-child bond, painted in shades of pink. He gently patted my back and said, Lean Cinch, forgive me for keeping you waiting for so long. As they looked at the father and son happily big high tam, they were also deeply moved. She sat still, not daring to disturb this gathering. Lean Cinch whispered to her father, Father, I still want to ride the horse, I have been wanting to try for a long time, don't hesitate, grant the wish for the girl to sit firmly. Riding horseboard, Lean Cinch continued to ask if father could lead the child to fly, I also did not refuse, the little girl is not a problem, hold my head tightly. Lean Cinch the Chang laughed heartily, the innocent girl said to him, Father, the star you picked for me, can you pick one for me too? He asked the girl in surprise, how do you know that? Lean Cinch chuckled and winked, I see that, young one. Hearing this, he turned to curiously ask Big High Van, what is the meaning of this? The sea of clouds reveals the miraculous will of the heavens, whatever is taken away will be given back in return, this child, since understanding the world, has never left the house but knows the secrets of the world. He squinted his eyes and exclaimed, come forth, for this is no ordinary scene. The mysterious sea cloud shook his head, not entirely separate but with a subtle distinction that could be called a whole new realm. Staying indoors but seeing the world, it is highly revered, always by your side, one might say. He raised his head to look at the girl, confirming the truth in her eyes. Lean Cinch nodded in agreement, I see that my father is very handsome and unmovable, the Ming King is very cool, and the villains who dare to oppress my sister will all be defeated. Praised by the maiden, he blushed and thought to himself, how embarrassing, he lost his composure and wondered why he was being praised like a child. Lean Cinch continued to act coy towards him, Ba could use his supreme martial arts skills to catch a bird for her, just to make her happy, Van Fon never refused any request, everything was not a problem for him. The mysterious sea cloud warned me to play with the beast first before I come to see if there is any progress in the martial arts, I will tell you. Lean Cinch said to his mother, Mother, you must cure my sister Deep's illness. Big High Tam gently touched the leg of the brave little girl, Hmm, play with your father, okay. With a flick of his wrist, he conjured up a spell, opening a portal to aid the High Tam in reaching the Deep family faster. Big High Tam did not hesitate and stepped inside without hesitation. After the mist had disappeared, he continued to play with his twin spirit, lifting the girl up high and saying, Let's start catching birds. The kind-hearted girl reminded her father sternly, Be gentle, don't hurt the little bird. The office nodded in agreement with the daughter. On the lean tam side, after a long period of healing, she finally had a moment to rest. As she strolled leisurely, she suddenly jolted in panic as a strange figure appeared above her head. Forever later, lean tam finally calmed down and realized, this is just a trick of the father and son. The office displayed the dazzling bright king's blossom technique for the daughter to see, delighting the young girl. He extended his hand forward, and the Ming Emperor's guard followed suit. His main goal is to catch the bird with the girl. As promised, he controlled every movement with a gentle touch. Lean Cinch excitedly shouted out, feeling extremely cool. Lean Tam stood below and shouted up to the leader, Brother, you haven't left yet, then stay and have dinner with us. You dare not agree, it has been a long time since you have tasted the skill of Lean Tam. With a swift movement, he gently landed on the ground after finishing his continuous life technique. Lean Cinch proudly boasted about his achievements to Lean Tam Ant. Lean Tam Ant chuckled and quickly pointed out the bird that their father caught. Lean Tam eagerly ran back to his aunt to see if she also wanted to give it a try. 
As she looked at the small bird in her hand, the gleam in Lean Tam's eyes was filled with happiness. She exclaimed, How adorable! He chuckled mischievously, Lean Tam, how old are you already but why do you still look like a child? Lean Tam scoffed and turned her eyes away, everyone is already a mother, not children anymore, Lean Cinch followed suit, nodding in agreement, Lean Tam is also a super good mother, very kind to Troop CA always. The office clerk gasped in surprise, how did you become a mother so suddenly, you didn't even tell me a word, so I could prepare a gift for you. Lean Tam innocently asked, what is a lucky money envelope? The gentle mist of the office is spreading, this is a tradition where outsiders congratulate friends when they have a child. Lean Tam blushed, these things Lean Tam did not understand. Before I could finish my sentence, a loud explosion echoed from afar. All three of them were startled and quickly turned around to assess the situation. Nearby, a house was billowing smoke. With her keen intuition, Lean Cinch immediately recognized that on Troop was indeed on Troop. Hearing the name Lean Tam mentioned, Danger quickly ran towards the raging fire and shouted loudly the name of his son, Troop Two. Like a swift wind, he moved into the midst of the blazing fire. Before Lean Tam could react, he had already appeared in front of her. In his hand, he still carried the bamboo pole as he staggered away. Lean Tam urgently asked his son, Troop Two, son, what's wrong with you? Quickly wake up and don't threaten your mother. Lean Cinch also worriedly asked on Truk in a soft voice, What will you do? I calm everyone down, do not panic, it's just a fainting spell, no harm done. Lean Tan gazed at him with suspicion, wondering if he was truly trustworthy. Young one, he reminded, you may be a doctor, but you are too anxious and have lost your calm. At that moment, Lean Tam suddenly remembered his true identity, yes, he was a doctor. She held her son's hand tightly, assessing the situation with a keen eye. Indeed, as you said, Troop 2 only fainted for a moment. She let out a sigh as she collapsed to the ground, wiping away the sweat that was dripping down her forehead. It is true that I have warned him many times not to do those strange things, but he is still stubborn and does not listen. An Troop is very skilled, everything he does is magical and extraordinary. Mighty herbs with miraculous healing powers, why not learn the ways of medicine to save lives, my dear? How can one inherit the throne, when suddenly the last Troop 2 finally awakens? As soon as he opened his eyes, the kid called out to him, Father has arrived. Young fool, you've met your match, I have arrived. After a moment, he began to sense that something was amiss with the words just spoken. He leapt up and shouted wildly. With a swift leap, he was sent flying through the air, landing several feet away from the ground. Lean Cinch gazed up in awe at the towering figure of Lean Tam, his face filled with confusion as he wondered what An Fan was up to. High above, bored with the view, he leapt down to the ground, his eyes wide as he stared at his own two hands. Meanwhile, Troop 2 didn't even realize when this little kid had already soared high up in the sky, laughing joyfully, oh, what a delight. Lean Tam was worried and urged him to quickly accept the challenge, he hesitated, but eventually agreed, not wanting to back down. With a swift motion, he clasped his hands together, focusing his mind to unleash his martial arts technique. He extended his hand towards the Troop 2 direction, releasing a golden stream of spiritual energy to protect the child. The little one slowly fell onto the cushion I created. He joyfully leapt and danced with soft and agile movements. Peering down from above, Troop 2 couldn't help but exclaim, This is truly the heavens and the earth, how can the imperial court be so small and insignificant? After waiting for his son to come down from Lean Tam for a long time, his impatience urged him to quickly summon his martial arts skills to bring him down. Troop 2 from above shouted down to his father, Father, the child wishes to slide down, can you make a slide for him? He did not hesitate to agree with his son. He transformed the support pillar into a slide to ensure the safety of his son. Troop 2 enthusiastically raised his sword and shouted with excitement. The kid slid down happily, laughing from start to finish. Sliding gracefully, the young warrior exclaimed, Beautiful, truly beautiful is this world. Below, he had already prepared himself in a stance ready to catch his son. Approaching the bamboo forest, the master of the place extended his hand to signal me, welcoming me to his domain. He also did not disappoint his son, gently embracing him in his arms. Troop 2 laughed out loud, ha ha, too much fun, can I see the scene in the sky again, please? Lean Cinch eagerly exclaimed, I also want to play, I also want to play. 
Sweat poured down his face as he faced these two children, muttering incantations to decipher the ancient scroll. All objects around immediately froze in place like statues. He held Lean Tam's hand and led her forward, despite her bewildered expression. Lean Tam asked, Dear sir, what kind of magic is this? It's truly miraculous. The wind howled like a fierce warrior in the valley that you have never seen before. You dare to challenge me, this is the moment we have been preparing for, the time to battle outside has come. He approached Lean Tam closely and asked, Now is the time to address this matter, how exactly did this all come about? Lean Tam widened his eyes and asked in return, What do you mean by that? He pointed his finger at the troop too and asked, Your child just called me father as well, didn't they? Lean Tam chuckled, his eyes narrowing and his cheeks flushing red in response, Indeed, you are indeed its father. He raised his hand in a gesture of determination, Wait, wait, just wait a moment for me. He clutched his head, his eyes darkening as he repeatedly took blows. In his mind, he calmed himself, focusing on his inner strength, staying calm, staying calm, as if he had not been through this before. No matter if I remember or not, once again I am seen as a tool of my heartless sect, destroyed by you sisters. Inhale, exhale, until now I have nothing to be surprised about, just need to clarify the reason why. After calming his spirit, he slowly turned his head to look at Lean Tam. He narrowed his eyes and asked her, So, what is the meaning behind all of this, why do we have a child? Lean Tam did not hide the truth she told, he said true too, when Big Hai Tam came here to find me and help save him, just as I was researching the side effects of the Guan Yin suicide method, so I took the opportunity to borrow him for a bit. He was puzzled as to why they had come looking for him. Lean Tam recounted a tale of ancient times when a wise old man tested a hundred herbs, today, with Lean Tam, I risk my life to try the medicine. Youngster, have you sought my approval before making such a decision, why do you treat me in such a manner? Lean Tam hesitated before replying, at that moment I asked him, if he didn't mind, just say a word. But if you remain silent and do not speak, then I shall take it as your agreement. Lean Tam recalled the time when he was lying motionless on the sickbed, she came to ask him, he was called Lean Tam for saving the infertile sisters in the world. With determination to risk my life trying the medicine, I need a man to cooperate with, but Lean Tam has never left the cup, the only man I can meet is myself, An Fan. I must borrow a little from you, just a little bit, my friend. If you do not agree, just say a word. At that time, he was injured to unconsciousness, naturally unable to say anything. Lean Tam had been waiting for his answer for a while before daring to speak, she cheerfully said to him, and he remained silent, but his silence was already a cheerful agreement. Hearing the meaningless story of Lean Tam, he stood there in a daze. The older brother's voice trembled as he spoke, Hey, little sister, how could you do this? Lean Tam embraced him tightly and continued, Luckily with his help, she was finally able to resolve the side effects of the gift of Quan Am. Hearing Sister Deep talk about the effectiveness of the treatment was very reassuring. With a sudden realization, he embraced his destiny, feeling that he could help her fulfill such a great mission, he was willing to sacrifice himself for this noble cause, finding it both noble and meaningful. You flick my forehead with Lean Tam, if there are any more incidents like this in the future, you must not make decisions on your own, understand? Lean Tam nodded, knowing that Troop 2 was now by his side, Lean Tam was also pleased. Then, Lady Hai Tam led Lean Cinch back, and the atmosphere in the cup became even more lively. He gently stroked her hair, just as he had done since her master passed away, she always felt lonely, rarely finding warmth in her cup. Lean Tam self-blamed, but she also felt useless, not only unable to cure Lean Cinch, Troop 2 also did not listen, doing strange things, not inheriting the medical skills of the pharmacy king. Master Fawn is the father of Troop 2, he also helps me think of a way to go. Upon hearing that, he pondered for a moment before letting out a deep sigh. His mother had once wanted him to learn martial arts, but he preferred dancing with swords and playing with sticks, causing trouble and stirring up conflicts. Later, he chose the path of martial arts in the chaotic world, along with a group of brothers who were willing to risk their lives, fighting for their beliefs. It was in this cycle of life and death that he would eventually find the legendary treasure he had been destined for. Lean Tam asked innocently, his eyes fixed on An Fan, What do you wish to say, sir? I shall answer, though we both are new to the role of parents, our children are not tools to fulfill the desires of adults, but rather their own interests should be the greatest motivation, though I do not know what our child desires, I believe that if they have a passion for something, we should support it wholeheartedly. 
Lin Tam felt a sense of sadness. What will happen to the heir of this royal medicine cabinet? You dare to suggest that if I have already broken the rules of the pharmacy king's cup, I should consider opening a medical school. Have you ever thought about passing on your courage to save and heal others to more people? Lin Tam hesitates. This matter. You continue to guide her, the world in chaos, waiting for a hero to rise, the people suffering from war need skilled doctors more than ever, the imperial capital is building a medical institution, would you be willing to become its director? Lean Tam seems to be lacking in confidence, this is something I have never thought of before, can I really do it? He placed both hands on her shoulders, cheering him on as he felt like he could conquer even the gods, knowing that her heart belonged only to him. Thinking so, Lean Tam embraced him tightly, smiling happily, his sword shining. He scratched his head in confusion of this magnitude, feeling embarrassed, didn't he? Lean Tam retorted, not all parents are like that, why can't you just accept it and move on? This must not be the case for everyone, right? Lean Tam blushed and hurried away, well then, you play with the kids, I'll go prepare a delicious meal. As Lean Tam departed, he glanced over at Troop 2 who was hovering nearby. He once again saved the little kid muttering a secret incantation, showing his cunning and determination. Two younglings just woke up and asked, Father, may we go out, can we, Father? He nodded in agreement, allowing the two of them to have their fill. He gently placed the troop two on the ground. Standing in front of the two of them, he declared, then let the journey begin. Two enthusiastic children spoke in unison with excitement. He raised his hand and declared, vanquish immediately. Two children beneath his feet were lifted up by a white cloud. Looking at the clouds beneath their feet, the two youngsters could only widen their eyes in amazement. He then raised his hand high and shouted loudly, wind, rise up. The wind gently blew, carrying the clouds high up in the sky. Troop 2 said to his sister Lean Cinch, are we dreaming or is this reality? He lay his head on the grass and told the two children a story. This technique is originally used to hide soldiers within the clouds for a surprise attack. Now, the once ordinary amusement park has transformed into a mystical realm where the arts of illusion and martial arts converge in a myriad of wonders. Speak no further, for here I stand with hands clasped and eyes gleaming brightly. The small clouds drifted away, their radius expanding with each passing moment. The sight of the cloudy sky in front of them made the two children feel like they had stepped into a fairy tale world. He suddenly conjured up clouds in the shape of a heart castle made of clouds and countless other interesting animal-shaped figures. The eyes of Lean Cinch and Troop 2 shone brightly as they continuously showed their admiration. He gently patted the heads of the two children and said, Let's go play, this place is safe and soft, you don't need to worry about getting hurt. Troop 2 dashed ahead, shouting triumphantly, What a magnificent sight, what a magnificent sight. Lean Cinch followed steadily behind, calling out to wait for her to go play together with Troop 2. Two younglings played on the clouds together, sliding on the sky. Bored and dissatisfied, he turned to leaping and dancing with joy. Lean Tam below saw the children playing happily, their mouths unconsciously curling up. She cooked while innocently watching over the two children. On the other side, he watched the children playing happily, he silently thought to himself that this scene might only exist in his own world, and his brothers had risked their lives to pursue it. They are the future of the world, the future of the world's hatred, chaos, and darkness begins to end with us. After a moment, Lean Tam had finished cooking a steaming hot meal. She called out loudly in a heroic tone, Troop 2, Lean Cinch, quickly come down to eat. From that sudden appearance of clouds, a sliding bridge emerged. He and the two children joyfully slid down together. On everyone's lips bloomed a smile of happiness. Sitting at the table, surrounded by billowing smoke. Four individuals exchanged knowing glances, their laughter filling the air with a sense of excitement and fervor. The atmosphere in the royal court today is unlike any other day. Troop 2 innocently asked his mother, Is father the most formidable person in this world? Lean Tam replied that Anfan's son is a formidable warrior, but his mother is not familiar with the outside world, so it may not be safe for her. Lean Cinch added her voice to what her mother had once said about fighting in battles, mentioning how her father was a formidable warrior but not so great in other aspects, especially in terms of relationships with his children. Perhaps her father was one of the worst in that regard. Hearing this, it felt like a deadly dagger piercing into his heart. Lean Tam also followed suit, when he regained consciousness, he dared not speak to Miss High Tam, his face still flushed and looking very foolish. He awkwardly covered his face, looking for a hole to hide in, please don't mention the embarrassing past anymore. 
May the gods bless you, noble warrior Chacha, can you lend me a hand with the task? The office replied with a cold and mysterious tone. Lean Sinch told the father and son, while Troop 2 discovered a hidden secret location. Troop 2 continued, with plenty of seeds and ancient scrolls, and a glowing wall. Lean Sinch continued, facing that wall as if it could speak, the mystical abilities that Troop 2 possessed were all learned from it. Listen to the little one say that I fell into contemplation during the battle, many relics from 500 years ago are hidden in secret places. However, at the core were some powerful pillars and ancient scriptures that no one had been able to decipher until now, unexpectedly even within the Medicine King's goblet. However, upon hearing the descriptions of these places, it seems that there is something amiss. Troop 2 gazed at his father and asked, Can you save our friends, father? He eyed the kid with suspicion, wondering who he was. The wise sage Troop 2 holds the key to unlocking the ancient language and writing for us, but he is imprisoned in a mystical room that no one can escape from, our mother and aunt are also at a loss for a solution. Lean Cinch gazed at the urgent expression on his father's face, his father was the most skilled warrior in the world, surely he would have a solution, wouldn't he? Upon seeing the two children pleading so earnestly, he could not refuse, let's go and see what's going on, he said to them. Lean Cinch and Troop 2 leapt for joy, feeling ecstatic and delighted. Two younglings held hands and said in unison, Let's go quickly, father. After a long journey, they finally arrived at their destination just as he was lost in admiring the stone slab. Lean Cinch and Troop 2 have used a mysterious spell to penetrate inside. As the two children slowly disappeared from his sight, he stood there dumbfounded, not understanding what was happening. Using his divine eye, he saw through the situation and sure enough, there was a hidden door right in front of him. He pondered why the mountain cave had such a miraculous relic hidden within, if not for this moment, he would never have seen through all the illusions in the world, this place was surely difficult to discover, how could mere mortals ever find it? Troop 2 peeked out and waved his hand, calling his father to quickly come over here. He answered the young man's challenge before slowly stepping inside. His eyes were met with an incredibly modern laboratory. Step deep inside, there are countless test tubes of various types of embryos. Furthermore, there were also seeds of mutated crops. With that, he descended into the mysterious underground dungeon. Troop 2 and Lean Cinch stood ready, waiting for the two kids to wave and call out to their father, right here, right now. As the blonde-haired man stood next to the two brothers, he raised his voice in curiosity, asking who she was. Troop 2 replied, his father also thought this was a righteous person, right? The kid tapped on the blonde girl's foot and said, this sister always stands here without flinching. Aunt Tam said that this could be the puppet of a person that she has never seen before, a relic of a civilization from before our time. Listen up, use the divine eye to scan around. On the body of the blonde, there was indeed a control mechanism. The doth ponder if this be the ancient art of puppetry from a bygone era, for its construction doth truly differ from the present day. No soul binding, no spiritual essence to control this puppet's actions. Glancing to the side, there were still two figures trapped in the glass cage. Before the man's chest was a bloody wound, next to him the woman held a photo in her hand, on her stomach was a long gash. That picture depicts a family, with the bodies of a man and a woman lying here, along with a young girl with green hair. He stroked his chin, deducing that the person inside had died a long time ago, yet the bones remained intact, this cabinet was even more powerful than the mysterious ice sect. Suddenly, the door next to me beeped and the girl with green hair in the picture slowly appeared. She said in a sharp tone, Troop 2 Lean Cinch the kids have arrived, huh? Troop 2 and Lean Cinch dashed towards Lam Lam, shouting her name repeatedly, Lam Lam, Lam Lam. We have come to seek our father's help for you, sister. He also realized that Lam Lam was the girl in the photo earlier. Lam Lam replied to the young ones with a grateful nod. She glanced at him and couldn't help but praise the handsome father of their children. The two kids proudly nodded in agreement, acknowledging that their father was truly formidable. He scratched his head and asked in a mysterious tone, what kind of sorcery has sealed the power inside? I feel no trace of any fluctuating power. Lam Lam said this is just a fictional image of mine, the real person is already trapped in the safe room downstairs. The confused office worker asked, what exactly is the mythical figure of magic or embodiment outside the body? Lam Lam chuckled softly, I never expected the world of 500 years in the future to change so drastically compared to the past, I say you don't understand, you say I'm also confused. 
Listen up, young one, this is no magic, this is called a world display device, 500 years ago, people like her used it to communicate with those far away. He said that this place can transmit sound far away, how many people in this world can reach this realm, only a few can be counted on one hand. Lean Sinch contributed her teachings to us, the disciples, with many miraculous knowledge such as calculus, fairy tales, and electronic mechanics, everything that Troop 2 invented was all thanks to the teachings of Kai Lam Lan. The office inquired, this is the last remaining technique from the civilization of the late era of religious sex. Suddenly, Lam Lam squinted his eyes, clutching his stomach in pain. Troop 2 anxiously asked his sister, sister, what should we do? Lam Lam weakly said, looking into the distance, in the future, I may not be able to stay with you all anymore, the energy source at this base is running low, and my body is starting to fail. Hearing that, Lean Sinch and Troop 2 both shed tears. They whispered Lam Lam don't you dare, sister. Two younglings grabbed my arm and pleaded, father, please help her quickly. The office gently patted the heads of the two young guards and said, don't worry, don't worry, I will think of a way. He gave me a Lam Lam look and asked how I could help her. Lam Lam shed tears, rejecting me without a care, I, I am not doing well, in the final moment of my life, with Troop 2 and Lean Cinch by my side, I have seen enough. Troop 2 desperately pleaded with his father to quickly save her, with her mother's exceptional medical skills, she could surely save her life. He asked, Lam Lam, why are you trapped in there? Lam Lam reminisced about 500 years ago when our world was engulfed in a fierce battle that nearly wiped out humanity. My parents brought me here to escape the danger, thinking we could evade our enemies, little did we know, they have found us. My parents have taken me to the safest room to hide. At that moment, Lean Cinch could only cry out in despair, Oh parents, release me, I want to go with you too. The three sisters warned the young girl that it is very safe here and she must take care of her parents and continue living. Two warriors then grabbed their weapons and charged out together, ignoring the cries and wails of the lamb lamb outside. The maiden seemed to have dreamt a very long dream, so long that she didn't know how many moons had passed before she woke up. And with her parents no longer in this world, there was no one left to take her out. The only thing lamb lamb regretted was not being able to accompany his parents on the journey. After finishing the story, the shadow of lamb lamb also gradually emerged. Lean Cinch cried out, Sister, sister, please don't do this. Troop 2 urged, Father, you are so formidable, please think of a way to help her. As he looked at the pitiful girl in front of him, he felt a slight stir in his heart. He patted the heads of the two disciples and said, Agreed, but the master also wants to learn about the techniques from 500 years ago, let's quickly lead the way, my disciples. Lean Cinch and Troop 2 swiftly led the way for their father to come quickly, come quickly here. As they descended into the Lam Lam cave, a sly smile suddenly bloomed on their faces. After wandering through the bamboo forest and using the bamboo pointing technique, they finally arrived at a secret chamber. Father, it seems that there is a terrifying and mysterious spell formation in here that even mother and aunt's hearts cannot enter. His brows furrowed as he cautiously eyed the pile of robot corpses in front of him. He transferred his internal energy to the two children, causing them to soar through the air together in a miraculous manner. He instructed his two young disciples to wait outside and prepare to assist him in breaking through this French formation. Troop 2 cheered on his father, urging him to keep fighting on. Lean Cinch also follows in his father's footsteps, so be careful. He raised his thumb up, affirming his certainty. As the two children safely ventured outside, he slowly approached the door. His eyes darted around with extreme caution. Indeed, just a few steps in and already stumbled upon a secret passage. The intertwining rays of light formed a cage around me. I fear nothing. He gave a faint smile, his whole body emitting a golden light. In just a moment, he effortlessly broke through the encirclement. The game did not stop there as some strange weapon suddenly appeared from the cracks in the walls. The four weapons were arranged in a square formation, facing each other. They shot out red beams forming a sphere in the middle. At the peak of ripeness, the red light shone like a dragon's breath, attacking from behind him. With a loud bang, a beam of red light shot straight towards La Van Fon. La Van Fon was slightly surprised. He immediately realized that this was no ordinary battle, as he was able to defeat even his own sex junior disciples. After pondering for a moment, La Van Fon immediately unleashed his most powerful martial arts technique. 
Immediately, a pitch black sphere was created, resembling a large belly that swallowed up the red light rays. The office was still the same. La Van stood calmly with his hands clasped behind his back, waiting for the black sphere to be dealt with. In a flash, the black sphere had absorbed the entire stream of light. After that, La Van Fon slammed his hand against the door, and two words appeared, empty and void. In the realm of thoughts, the material of this door is extremely rare and incredibly sturdy. If one were to attempt to break it with their bare hands, not only would the door suffer, but the person inside would also be affected. With a swift movement, he sat down and observed the situation, his mind quickly making a decision. Hmm, so be it, he thought. La Van Fon unleashed the power of his arm, delivering a strike that shattered the floor, causing the entire room to tremble. The impact caused the divine power to move mountains, Lin Chen and Truxu outside immediately showed concern. The bamboo forest is whispering, whispering, quickly let's see what's inside, father and sister don't worry. The disciple listened and immediately obeyed, but then the disciple shook his head and said, There are many intertwining streams of light inside, I cannot see anything. The mysterious figure inside the room effortlessly opened the door, with a cold expression and unimaginable strength, they held the door open with one hand. Suddenly, two throwing darts came flying out of nowhere. They seized the body of La Van Fon and bound it tightly as if determined to never let him escape. It turns out she is Lam Lam, she appeared with a terrifying face, enjoying breaking into laughter, ha ha ha, finally succeeded, the world is starting to tremble now. She looked at La Van Fon with a mischievous glint in her eyes. The office's face remained calm, suddenly, Lam Lam spoke up, saying, As I stepped outside, I encountered a benevolent master, in gratitude for setting me free, I shall use my martial arts skills to take possession of your body. With a fierce determination, Dut Loy Lam Lam Lao approached La Van Fon like a bloodthirsty demon stalking its prey. Unfortunately, she underestimated her own strength. As he was about to seize the body of La Van Fon, La Van Fon swiftly struck back and turned the tables. The flick of her wrist that she used to deflect the sword strike was returned by the swordsman. Furthermore, Lam Lam was tightly bound, with both hands and feet tied. Filled with anger, Lam Lam shouted, What is this? Release me quickly, old man. The office knew Tua Lam Lam's skills well, he said, Truly extraordinary, I have long felt that she is strange. She thought she had crafted a perfect story, but every part of it had flaws. Hearing the name the Lam, Lam felt a chill down his spine, then she shouted in La Van Fon's face, What did you say? Furthermore, La Van Fon added, the mystical barrier here serves not to keep enemies out, but rather to prevent those within from leaving. On the second day, she recounted a touching family story, with the two of them lying in the hibernation chamber. The wound on the mother's body was not fatal, she had enough strength to release her daughter. Why did you let me go then? Lam Lam asked angrily. The office replied calmly, for the master of the world is undefeated and fears no evil schemes, moreover, because the master's child admires the image of the sister Ling Lam that she has created, the master does not want the children to be disappointed. The reason why La Van Fon made Lam Lam burst into laughter, with a face full of amusement, she said to Van Fon, so it seems that we are about to be disappointed. La Van Fon's face showed a hint of panic as he suddenly felt a woman attacking him from behind. With a sinister look on his face, Lam Lam sneered at La Van Fon and said, Where is your fancy cannon, O oh Kat Nong, the most advanced one ever created from the nuclear energy furnace? Go die, I will not choose to spare that little brat. The flow of attacking power surged as La Van Fon directly channeled all his gathered energy into the depths of his mouth. Seizing the opportunity, he swiftly used his staff technique to strike her back, using the very energy he had just been attacked with to counterattack the mysterious woman. The golden armored warrior came to the aid of Lam Lam, who never imagined such a scene. She was struck by La Van Fon with a blow that pierced the heavens. Not only that, but he also traveled across the globe to the small kingdom belonging to a mysterious eastern celestial empire. Witnessing the scene, Lam Lam felt truly threatened and her face turned pale, her complexion even greener than her hair. Lam Lam was in shock, unable to speak, his face frozen in disbelief, sweat pouring down his face. The office clerk's gaze was sharp, causing her hair to flutter slightly, making her more nervous than a leaf in the wind. After that, Van Fon said to Lam Lam, I and she are not acquainted, yet she wants to marry me, so if I defeat her, it's easy to understand. At this moment, Lam Lam finally felt fear creeping in. She immediately retracted the remaining acupuncture needles on her body with a swift and elegant movement. 
With a swift movement, he dropped to his knees and begged fervently, Forgive me, master, I have strayed too far, please spare the life of this dog of mine. Unexpectedly, La Van Fawn also released her from her bonds. On the dusty floor, with a throbbing head, he thanked La Van Fawn for sparing his life. The office's cold face look at Lam Lam was icy and unforgiving. But unexpectedly, this cunning woman is actually very wicked, she smirked maliciously and took advantage of Van Fawn's distraction to launch another sneak attack. This time, she used deep hypnosis to make La Van Fawn not notice and fall into a whirlpool of madness. After that, Van Fawn stood up straight, seeing Van Fawn looking like a lost soul, he burst out laughing gleefully, ha ha ha. She looked into the eyes of the elegant swordsman and uttered words of insult, this was the humiliation technique that had been passed down for thousands of years, the spirit of humanity truly had not progressed at all. As Lam Lam finished her sentence, a terrifying sensation ran through her body, making her shiver uncontrollably. The surrounding space was now filled with nothing but dark shadows, that was the realm of the mysterious Lam Lam. In that space, Van Fawn shone like a lone beacon in the dim consciousness of Lam Lam. Lam Lam's heart raced in fear as he shouted, How did you get in here, without any advanced equipment to assist you, how could a mere mortal enter the realm of the subconscious? With a darkened expression on his face, he answered Lam Lam's question with a menacing tone, Ha, huh, you've picked the wrong person. In normal circumstances, Van Fawn would not resort to such extreme measures, however, Lam Lam's treachery and wickedness forced Van Fawn to eradicate the root of the problem, using the soul-searching technique. It burns like a fierce fire in the dark soul of the wandering warrior. The forest is in pain, pleading for mercy, but I know I have done wrong. At that moment, she said to La Van Fawn, I am worth a great deal. In an instant, the power of the forest wind has caused the evil heart within the forest wind to dissipate like smoke. After finishing the battle, I fell to the ground in exhaustion. She appeared as if she had lost her soul, her face pale and her mouth constantly spewing nonsense, she kept babbling in front of the martial arts master. After a moment, she vomited out a strange creature resembling a squid. Perhaps it was this beast that turned the heart of the forest so wicked, its goal also to eliminate La Van Fawn. After a moment of dizziness, her face finally regained its color, she glanced around and then looked up in confusion to ask La Van Fawn, Who are you? Where are my parents? Just as she uttered a word, she fell to the ground with a thud, La Van Fawn looked on silently, his expression unreadable. The bamboo student and the lotus disciple outside now caught sight of a familiar figure emerging. The father of the two children is carrying the sister of the Lamb Lamb on his shoulder. The two children saw Lamb Lamb faint and immediately ran back with worried expressions on their faces. The elegant office led Lamb Lamb and two children to a house deep in the forest. Lam Lam remained unconscious on the bed, receiving attentive care and treatment. Troop 2 and Lean Cinch were deeply concerned for Lam Lam, with tears welling up in Lean Cinch's eyes as she watched Lam Lam lying there. With a heavy heart, Lian Tam observed Lam Lam's condition and let out a deep sigh. Seeing the new arrival, Van Fon asked, What's the situation? With a compassionate smile, he replied, No worries, I was just marveling at the formidable technique from 500 years ago, this girl is simply too weak in health, nothing to worry about, it's just her consciousness that needs some work. The office clerk seemed to anticipate what was about to be said, so he quickly interrupted her. After that, he advanced stealthily and whispered into her ear with concern. After listening attentively, she nodded and then a smile appeared on her face, she understood the matter. With a compassionate look, she turned to the two children, gently stroked their heads and said, Don't worry, my little lambs, your mother is fine, go play outside now, she needs some peace and quiet. The two obedient children listened carefully and ran swiftly towards the door. After the room was left with only three people, Van Fon spoke to Lean Tam, 500 years ago, the human body was extremely fragile. However, she possesses remarkable skills, wait until she wakes up, then ask her about the ancient techniques, see if there is a way to save Liansen. With a compassionate heart, I agree, yes, I will do it, my friend. Suddenly, Van Fawn felt the message from the mysterious sea heart, she said to Van Fawn, the revered one, quickly come over here, I have made a new discovery. The office clerk gently touched his head and said to her, I must go to the deep family first, those little ones are bothering you to take care of them, I will gladly accept your kind offer. Then La Van Fon turned around, ready to leave. Suddenly, he turned around and said with concern, as parents, we must support our child's interests, especially in the case of Troop 2. 
Still with that gentle smile, she nodded in agreement, yes, I will follow your lead. The office said his final words before leaving, help me bid farewell to my children, tell them I will come back to visit them often. Then he strode forward, his steps purposeful and determined. Unexpectedly, before reaching the gate, the sound of two young children echoed from behind, father. The office suddenly turned around, Troop 2 and Lean Cinch rushed over with a sorrowful expression on their faces. Each child grabbed their father's hand and eagerly asked, Father, where do you wish to go? Facing the two children, Van Fawn appeared very flustered, not knowing how to answer. Not only that, but I also saw tears in their eyes, the situation was getting even more difficult. He decided to sit down calmly, before leaving, the father would perform a magic trick for the children to see. Hearing the children's laughter at the magic tricks, they became curious and asked, What kind of magic is this? Is it sorcery? The office flickered and said, You will know soon enough, my children. The two young children in the study gazed out towards the distant grasslands and towering mountains. You better watch closely, he said to them, his sword at the ready. The mountain is the guardian of the sea, the sea is the lover of the east wind. In the sky appeared a giant dragon spout. The young warrior cried out in fear, water, water is about to flood us. Fearful of the bamboo assassin and the twin killers, he quickly ran back to seek refuge behind Master Cloud Peak. The office smiled and gently patted their heads, saying, Fear not, my children, lift your heads and see. At that moment, Lien Sinch and Troop 2 dared to raise their heads, just as their father had instructed. A breathtaking scene unfolded before my eyes, the sky like a giant aquarium, with hundreds of fish of all sizes racing each other in the water. The bamboo student couldn't hide his excitement as he asked his master, What is this? What is this? It's so big. Unexpectedly, Troop 2 and Lean Cinch also witnessed with their own eyes a sea creature that they had never seen before right in front of them. They were still naive as they asked about the squid, what creature is this, can we eat it? The bamboo student curiously reached out his hand, wanting to touch the ink squid inside. Who would have thought we were ambushed by him, the two children were splattered with ink all over their faces and clothes. And so they turned to each other with a mischievous smile. The office clerk watched as two innocent children laughed and played in front of him, unable to contain their joy. The happy smile of a father now graces his noble face. But he had to bid farewell to them in order to depart. The four warriors, Lean Tam, Troop Two, Lean Cinch, and Van Fawn, waved goodbye to each other before Van Fawn departed. The twin-eyed girl's tears still sparkled, her hand waving goodbye to her father. Truly, these children were wise beyond their years. The scene shifted to the office where Tien Vu, Big Hai Tam, and Tian Fan were all present. The Celestial Master is currently unconscious on the table, while Tien Vu is deeply worried. The final office has finally arrived, as he stepped out of the teleportation gate. Seeing Tien Vu and Big Hai Tam together there. The office was a bit shy, he asked hesitantly, So, what's the situation now? The mysterious sea pearl, truly blessed by the gods, never did I expect to have a child with such a stunning beauty like the enchanting dancer sister. The office was already tense, but now it was even more tense, he broke out in a cold sweat, his eyes darting to the side as he said, this, this is something you must inquire about carefully. Upon hearing the words, Team Vu smirked, well said, he replied, it seems that it is indeed a fortunate time for a rogue like me, who would have thought that I could make a woman like you waver in her beliefs for a fool like me, huh? It was truly a daunting task to stand before these two women, Van Fon could only scratch his head as he felt completely at a loss, not knowing how to steer the conversation. This demeanor of Van Fon seems to have caught the attention of Big High Tom. She turned to the musician and said, Listen carefully, take care of our children before we leave. Hearing the sound of thundering hooves, Bao Van Fon shouted, Come over here quickly. The three warriors, Team Vu, Big High Tam, and Van Fon, hurried back to the Celestial Hall. Observing the swirling mist of the sea, the wandering swordsman asked, What discoveries have you made? See heart stone, follow me into the endless heart of the boy, and all will be revealed, I cannot do it alone. The office nodded in agreement, before delving into the depths of the celestial peak, he turned to Tran and Tien Vu and said, Do not worry, we are here, we will surely find a way. The mysterious sea master warned, Listen carefully, if that little brat makes any move later, make sure to not let him act recklessly. Without hesitation, Big Hai Tam and La Van Phan immediately reached the peak of their martial arts skills, their minds and bodies completely focused. Two of them created a small shadow, then delved into the mind of the martial artist. 
In a flash, they had entered inside. The mysterious sea treasure is hidden in the clouds, go down and find it. A scene of unbelievable proportions unfolded before the two, with hundreds of lightning bolts illuminating a pitch-black spherical object, surrounded by swirling vortexes with no visible way out. Not only that, but also hundreds of nameless demon faces appeared. The office felt truly mysterious, why was it so? Usually a person's heart hides what has happened in the past. Either a myriad of colors and styles, or a swift and decisive strike. Verily, I have never beheld the countenance of any man with such a visage. The sea heart spoke, what exists in the heart's landscape is made of love and hatred, along with all memories and emotions that shape it. Then she pointed forward and said, this already shows that deep inside the boy's heart, there is only fear and hidden thoughts. La Van Fon turned around, searching for the master of the heavenly peak. Hai Tam led Van Fon to the master's lair, as they approached the master. The office raised his hand to cast a spell. Unexpectedly, the dark figure revealed sharp spikes piercing straight through the bodies of Van Fon and Hai Tam. The office and the Sea of Secrets quickly shifted away to avoid confrontation. The office and the Sea of Jade were both in a state of confusion. Big Hai Tam chuckled lightly and said, You can let me go now. La Van Fon was startled and looked down to see that he was holding Big Hai Tam's hand. The scribe quickly withdrew his hand. He hesitantly asked, What just happened? Big Hai Tam replied, This is perhaps the concrete reality and the strong protection desire of the little boy. This is the appearance of the older brother's heart wanting to protect his younger sibling well. The sharp spikes retract, the black sphere returns to its original form. Suddenly, the black orb began to tremble and shake. The black sphere transformed into the shape of a giant man, with only his blazing red eyes visible. The shadow whispered, Back off, don't you dare harm my sister. The office looked up and said, In this world, besides you and me, who else has such a strong mind? The Big High Tam said, To hone one's character, one must overcome countless challenges, experience endless suffering, and have strong determination to reach this level. The mind of this child will bear the consequences, but the pain it must endure is greater than you can imagine. The office clerk repeated, So what should we do next? If we try to break through the barrier, it will harm its mind. Big Hai Tam replied, This is the reason why I have asked the holy monk to come and help. Next, you must focus all of its attention on you, but under the condition of not causing harm to it, that way, I will be able to enter its mind to find out the cause. The office manager said, It's settled then, everything will have to rely on me now. The giant shadow swung its arms as if preparing to strike down, while the misty figure soared upwards. The office clerk said, Let your father feel the determination to protect your sister. The shadowy figure raised his hand threateningly and said, Quickly leave this place, do not harm my sister. The scribe wielded his skills in the art of strategy, gradually growing in power and wisdom. The dark shadow loomed menacingly, at that moment, La Van Fon's figure matched the dark shadow in size. The dark shadow remained firm and said, I'm not afraid, I'm just as formidable as you, I will never let you win, I will never be defeated. The cold-hearted office clerk said, Very well, then come at me. The shadow swiftly raised his hand high to the sky, preparing for a deadly strike. A large lightning ball appeared in the sky. The sphere unleashed a mighty bolt of lightning straight at the body of La Van Fawn. The shadowy figure spoke, I am formidable and can be even more formidable, if only you would heed my advice. Standing in the midst of the lightning strike, La Van Fawn remained calm and composed. The office raised his hand, his eyes gleaming. The lightning strike began to weaken, in just a moment, the lightning stopped, leaving behind a dark shadow that was incredibly awe-inspiring. The office clerk said, in this world, it's not all about fighting, consider every battle as a lesson from the ancient gods, passed down from father to son. The key to the battle against the ancient gods is not in direct attacks or physical destruction, but in the competition between hope and despair, between fear and courage. At that moment, among the key principles, there was also letting go of attachments and trust. After speaking, the figure disappeared like a wisp of smoke. In the sky, suddenly a large yellow hole appeared, from which slowly emerged a giant hand. The shadowy figure whispered menacingly, Here, here. The hand inched closer to seize the dark orb. The black orb outside continued to emit dangerous bolts of lightning. The mysterious sea warrior advanced towards the block of stone, with a swift movement, the sea warrior touched the block of stone with their hand. The sphere shot out something that tightly wrapped around the body, immobilizing the sea warrior. The calm sea dragon uses his techniques with a formless realm. 
The iron ball slowly pulled the sea pearl into it. In an instant, the sea pearl was captured completely. The space was now filled only with the black sphere and silence. The black sphere continued to shoot lightning bolts outside. At this moment, Big High Tam was brought to a vast and mysterious realm that seemed to be beyond the reaches of the universe. The mysterious sea warrior looked around vigilantly. Suddenly, a strange feeling crept over him and he turned back to take another look. Behind the bamboo sea of the heart is a girl sitting and crying. She is surrounded by a dark misty sphere. The girl cried out, Sir, mother, I'm so scared, I'm so scared, save me, save me. The mysterious sea breeze quietly approached. The mysterious sea bandit had set his sights on taking the young maiden's hand in marriage. Suddenly, the girl turned back with bloodshot eyes. Big High Van was astonished. The girl screamed, Who are you? Who are you? Where are you, my love, my love? The girl clutched her head and cried out, Don't come here, go away, go away. At the feet of the girl, a black aura emanated. The dark realm spread out all around. The red-eyed mice scurried together in a pack and ran towards the little girl. Some beasts have risen to the girl's feet. The frightened girl screamed, I am a good child, I am a good child, why did you bite me, it hurts so much, it hurts so much, get out, get out. From the sleeve of the little girl's shirt, a swarm of cockroaches also emerged. The centipede crawled up the girl's neck, she shivered in fear and screamed, get away, get away. The girl tried to struggle and drive away those animals. The girl wept as she fell to the ground, before her appeared a mysterious object. It was a tightly bound coffin, but with a hole pierced through it. From the hole, a hand emerged. The frightened girl screamed, I can't see, I can't see anything at all, oh, sir, oh sir, mother, mother, where are you too? At that moment, the sea of green bamboo began to chant a spell above the girl's head, while the silent man silently recited a calming incantation. The ancient runes began to move across the girl's body, shimmering with mysterious power. The girl gradually calmed down and drifted into a peaceful sleep. The girl huddled up, holding her head in a neat manner. The girl turned her back on the mysterious sea heart, the sea heart side. Returning to the bamboo forest, La Van Fon split into four entities surrounding a box, inside which was a young boy. The imprisoned person is a celestial warrior, with a face adorned with strange patterns, especially the emotionless black eyes. The celestial warrior shouted, Release me, release me. The office clerk said, Do not resist, you cannot escape because this magical technique of the general makes you feel fear and anxiety. This is the prison that controls your heart. The mysterious Big High Tam appeared behind La Van Fon and called out, On Fon. The office clerk inquired sharply, Have you discovered anything? Big High's heart spoke, You care too much, just add more and that's it, you also see what I see. The bewildered Van Fon didn't understand anything, suddenly, his eyes turned emerald green, and Van Fon exclaimed, This is it. The mysterious Sea Heart did not answer but instead glanced towards the box. The celestial master was kneeling in despair, the Sea of Secrets said, Get up and leave now. Returning to reality, the celestial body lying on the table continuously kicked vigorously. Teen Vu exerted all his efforts to keep the celestial peak peaceful and undisturbed. Teen Vu said, Child, child, have a little patience. The celestial hall is now peaceful again, Teen Vu can rest assured and step aside. The sound of the flute made tears fall uncontrollably, La Van Fon, who was behind, immediately said, Is there a way to stop this? Teen Vu turned around in surprise and said, You too. The mysterious sea heart only bloomed a friendly smile. Teen Vu grasped Big High Tam's hand and asked, Have you discovered anything? The mysterious sea heart replied, I am the mother of the child, so I should be informed of what has happened. Big High Tam reached out and touched Teen Vu's forehead. The mysterious sea warrior harnesses his power, showing mercy to his enemies. The image of the girl trembling and saying, I'm so scared, I'm so scared, when she was bitten by a mouse and screamed. I am but a humble child, why do you bite me so? It hurts, it hurts, now leave, leave at once, before the insects crawl all over me. Seeing those scenes, tears of Teen Vu flowed down his cheeks. The sound of thunder shook the room as Big High Tan grabbed his hand tightly. Teen Vu spun around and embraced Tian Fan before shouting, Forgive me, my daughter, forgive me. The office clerk said, knowing what the girl had to go through, but how should it be treated? The mysterious sea heart said, if this illness is said to be easy to cure, then it is easy to cure, but if it is said to be difficult to cure, then it is even harder than reaching the sky. 
Tin Vu quickly turned back and asked, Sister, tell me, what should we do now? Even if I have to risk my life, I must cure my daughter. Big Hai's eyes silently watched the dance, then, Big Hai turned to La Van Phan and said, The medicine is at their place. The bewildered office clerk asked me again. Ting Vu replied, My dear, if I were a medicine for a girl, I would have cured her long ago. The Sea of Secrets answers and return with the holy sect. If you were to be bitten by rats, crawled upon by cockroaches, and forced to stay near a pile of corpses, would you be afraid? The office shook his head and said, I have been through countless battles in my life, where death was as common as a meal. Even rats and cockroaches were rare helpers in sustaining life during fights. I got used to it long ago. Big Hai Tam said to Teen Vu, Although I have forsaken the teachings of Buddha for you, my destiny has granted me a new life. As a mother, I know that a mother can sacrifice everything for her child. This is the power of maternal love. Big Hai Tam stood up and approached the spot where Tian Fan was. Big Hai Tam sat down and touched Tian Fan's forehead, saying, He may be young, but he has to endure such hardships, with no inner peace, fear is born, leading him to close off his heart to avoid pain. The antidote to fear is courage, to face everything with bravery and feel the warmth of love. Big Hai Tam raised his hand as if to take something, Teen Vu and La Van Phan looked bewildered and did not understand. The mysterious sea heart said, Let the young boy feel the courage and love from the two of you. The office fell silent as La Van Phan stood up, ready for action. The office touched the hand of the mysterious sea heart. Teen Vu also stepped forward and placed his hand on it, the three of them touched hands. The big high heart said, The boundless light of the future illuminates, dispelling all misfortunes, shining on all sex, the eightfold noble path opens the way out, the moon shines brightly. The three warriors have returned to the unknown territory, with the young girl sitting right in the middle. The sound of thunder startled Teen Vu, the girl trembled and pleaded, I'm so scared, save me, save me. Teen Vu hastily said, Sister Hai Tam, what should we do now? The mysterious sea heart replied, Remember this, bring back the strongest belief that has helped the two of them overcome those desperate obstacles, the moonlight shining brightly, can help the boy personally feel the pain the two of them have experienced together with the light that has guided them. Teen Vu anxiously looked at La Van Phan. La Van Phan returned the gaze and nodded in agreement. La Van Phan closed his eyes. Teen Vu also focused and closed his eyes. Big Hai Tan used his magic, drawing a circle with two fingers. The mysterious sea pearl touched the head of the young girl, a golden light shone down. The light began to shine everywhere. The shadow of La Van Phan, the sound of thunder, and the bright light of that girl all shone brightly. In the white light appeared the gaze of the little girl. The girl slowly opened her eyes, suddenly, she jolted awake. The girl was floating in the air, below her, the sun was blazing brightly. The girl began to fall into the abyss, plummeting straight into the heart of the sun. As I entered, the sight of a burning village greeted me. Eighteen years ago, in the chaotic and terrifying era, my family and the whole village were all killed by a group of bandits for a meaningless reason. La Van Phan was riding a broom flying over the sand dunes. As he soared through the clouds, he cried out, Father, Mother, Little Sister. As I arrived, the entire village was nothing but ruins. Looking at the bodies of the three men lying in front of him, his eyes filled with a terrifying sense of awe. The parents and younger sister lay on the ground, their breaths gone, embracing each other. The father didn't even blink, La Van Phan knelt down. Tears streamed down her cheeks, as La Van Phan let out a heart-wrenching cry filled with despair. The scene shifted to the massacre camp, shadowy figures with eyes filled with red hatred were slaughtering everyone in sight. The brave soldiers shouted, quickly, stop him. With just one sword, the two men were already cut in half, only the gaze of hatred remained, La Van Phan strode into the palace. The fierce warrior sat calmly, drinking wine, with his woman in his arms. La Van Phan was furious and thought to himself, I can't understand why they don't mingle with anyone, living independently and self-sufficiently, why must they endure such a fate? La Van Phan raised his sword and shouted, Why, why have they never harmed anyone, why kill them? The strong shall live, the weak shall die, this is the law of the land, no need for words, just kill if you want to. Who are these people you're talking about, they must not be your lovers, have I met them before, ha ha ha. The office was even more furious when hearing that insulting remark. The office shouted loudly, die, and immediately rushed in to attack. The arrogant man confidently declared, as a mere cultivator, he had no right to harm the master. 
The two sides clashed continuously in the palace. The merchant's office was filled with bodies kneeling down, the merchant's mouth was dripping with blood. The bully sneered, saying that just practicing chi alone has already allowed you to surpass the dual realms like this. The brute unleashed a roaring punch, except death before the mighty fist of power. La Van Phan recalled the scene of his family being slaughtered at the peak, gritting his teeth in anger. A loud shout came from La Van Phan. He lunged forward with his sword, his fist clenched tightly around the hilt. The sword was broken, La Van Phan stood dumbfounded. With a swift flick of the sword, the blade pierced the neck of the tyrant. With a loud laugh, the bully said, Ha ha ha, you also amuse me quite a bit, bring your resentment and hatred to your death. Before the bully could throw a punch, a giant sword pierced through the ceiling and struck him directly in the face. The strong man's body was split in half, La Van Phan stared in shock as the corpse fell to the ground. Above, there is a person flying down. The master of La Van Phan sheathed his sword and said, Foolish disciple, you are the only heir to my legacy, if you die so recklessly, who will inherit my swordsmanship? The air in the office was tense, La Van Phan's master used a spell with a broken sword just now. The sword was reattached to the hilt, the master said, with only one thing, he had spoken the truth. Strength is the ultimate virtue, if you want the world to follow your principles, you must be the strongest. The office shouted out, the world is so vast, even if I cultivate for my whole life, I cannot reach the level of my master, moreover, with so many martial artists in the world, how can I fulfill my own principles, can my parents and younger sister survive this? La Van Phan stormed off in anger, the rain poured down heavily, thunder echoing all around. The silent office walked through the rain, I was desperate and lost in pain at that time. La Van Phan fell to the ground, too weak to stand any longer, and then, he passed out. A figure of a woman approached, she was graceful and sat down beside him, saying, Hey, what trouble have you gotten yourself into? Teen Vu commanded his servant, Quickly, take me up to see him. Returning to the present, La Van Phan spoke, It is she who gave me courage when I was at my lowest and most disappointed, Teen Vu blushed slightly. The memory of La Van Phan continues to haunt me as I stay at her house, working as a protector, until her father is also killed by the bandits, pushing the deep family to the brink of collapse. At that moment, the thunder roared, after this disaster, the deep family still has me, everything will not be chaotic, from this moment on, I will be the one to bear the burden of the deep family. In the realm of office politics, she is braver than I am, just having endured the pain of losing her father, she now must bear the dangers facing her family, striving to turn the situation around. It was her resilience that gave me courage, allowing me to finally confront my own destiny. The young maiden had witnessed all that transpired. It seems that the girl has also understood everything, the image blurred again. In the present reality, Teen Vu said, No, it is not so, you are the one who gives me courage. The confused office clerk asked again, What, what is it? Recalling that moment, Teen Vu lit a piece of paper, everyone gathered in front of the coffin in great numbers. One person in the crowd said, Listen, all the uncles and elders in the clan have arrived, the deep family cannot be without a leader, the clan leader has no son, we must quickly nominate a new leader, or else the hundreds of people in the deep family will perish. The people behind also spoke up, Hey, quickly hand over the treasure that your father entrusted to you, hand it over quickly. The office clerk stepped forward to block the crowd, with a wave of his hand, the office clerk signaled them to stop. The dust rose as the crowd stepped back, La Van Phan cut a long swath on the floor, separating the crowd. The cold and aloof office manager remained silent, the leader of the group, furious, shouted, Who do you think you are, an outsider meddling in the affairs of the deep family, get out. The sound of thunder suddenly made her shiver, she turned back to look at La Van Phan, thinking to herself, while everyone else was trying to push me into despair, he stood in front to protect me, giving me more courage.